from Florida Field in Gainesville, the University of Florida Fighting Gators host their arch rivals, the Florida State Seminoles. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Gallagher with Jim Yarbrough. We'll be bringing you all the action of today's game, and it is one of the nation's great rivalries. As a matter of fact, it divides husbands and wives, parents and children, brothers and sisters. That's right. There's been fisticuffs in some living rooms before about this ball game, and I, I uh, have a personal relationship with this rivalry because I had a brother and sister that went to Florida State, and there's a couple of other Gators besides me and my family, so it is a civil war. This morning at uh, around Gainesville, I saw a lot of husbands Husbands and wives, a lot of family members riding in the same car, but having different colors on. So it's going to be a miserable ride for part of that family on the ride home. Well, what about the game this afternoon? The Gators offensively haven't been able to generate a lot of points in the past couple of games. Well, the Gators have had problems getting on the scoreboard. You know, their first seven or eight games, they were averaging close to 30 points a game. Uh, recently, they've had problems getting on the board. Conversely, Florida State has no problems getting in the end zone. They're one of the top scoring machines in the country. So can the Gators regain that scoring punch? We'll find out have great records coming into it, and there's a lot of pride at stake. Well, the seniors here at the University of Florida have lost one game during their career, and they want to go out with that record intact. Uh, the seniors at Florida State have not beaten the Gators. They want to go out with a victory, so you're going to see a lot of leadership from the seniors on both teams, a lot of emotion from those seniors. It'll be a great one, and we'll be right back with a kickoff after this. Florida's number one in the field. You're looking at the University of Florida football team. They have just come out onto the field and joined with the seniors who are playing their last game as Gators. And of course, for all of these gentlemen, it's a meaningful time. Jim, and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about because of the fact that they've given their all for four seasons. Well, I, I remember a lot about the particulars of my last game on Florida Field. We, we were able to beat the Miami Hurricanes. Larry Smith, our great All-American tailback, made a run into the end zone late into the ball game. It seems like one of the memories that you always take with you is your, your last appearance on Florida Field. Well, we're looking at some of the ones who are playing. Jack Gerzina, number 65, uh, the big senior from Fort Pierce, will be uh, playing his last game. And uh, some of the starters for the University of Florida include defensively left tackle Alonzo Mitz, who's had just a great career here, and Alonzo Johnson, the All-American linebacker from Springfield, Florida. Alonzo is very concerned about this game. We're talking about Mr. Johnson because of the fact that so many of the people that live around his hometown are Seminoles, so he really wants to win this one bad. And especially, too, I saw a comment he made earlier in the week that uh, he knows that Florida State likes to get the tailbacks around the corner, and Alonzo Johnson lives on that corner. So he's going to want to put a stop, put the brakes on that Seminole running game. Well, here's a full house crowd at Florida Field, and Coach Bobby Bowden leads his Florida State Seminoles out. They have a record of 8-2, and two, an excellent football team headed for the Gator Bowl. Bobby Bowden's been a winner everywhere he's gone. His winning percentage is a little bit over 700. He's batting 700 as a college coach. Tremendous career uh, Bobby Bowden's had. Weather at kickoff time, the temperature at 81 degrees as you look at the orange and blue flag of the Gators. The humidity 84%, the wind at 12 miles an hour, and it is out of the southwest. As we look at the Gator captains there, Miller, Anderson, Alonzo, Johnson, and uh, Florida's record 26-1-2 at Florida Field since 1981. Ray Criswell, also a captain for the Gators of Florida today, and John L. Williams, number 22, to the right of your screen. And for the Florida State Seminoles, it'll be Kirk Coker, Terry Warren, Stanley Scott, and Hassan Jones as captains today here at Florida Field in this renewal of one of the nation's great rivalries. And the home field advantage is a big factor today. The Gators losing one game over the last five years. The Seminoles coming in here on a, on a roll offensively, being able to put up a lot of points on the board, having a lot of success this year, only losing two ball games. They're coming into Florida Field with a very positive feeling. 
about their ball club. Of course, they're going on to the Gator Bowl. They've had a tremendous success. They they won a big game at Nebraska, had a disappointing loss to Auburn and Miami. But other than that, it's been a big year for the Seminoles. Well, for the Gators, if they win this afternoon, it would give them a consecutive 9-1-1 one, one regular season record. That's what they were last year, too. It would also mark the third time in school history that a Gator team has won nine games in the regular season, 75 and 84 were the other years. Now the Seminoles have won the toss, Jim Gallagher, but they've waived the right to make a decision to the second half, so the Gators made the decision to receive. The Gators will get the football, but the Seminoles did win the toss, so the Seminoles are looking to jump on that Gator offense from the moment the ball's kicked off this afternoon. Well, we're waiting for the start of this afternoon's ball game. Galen Hall along the side line has had just a great, great two years here at the University of Florida. And uh, in his two years at the University of Florida, he's done a lot of things that no other coach has ever achieved in the Southeastern Conference. He's the first head coach in conference history to go unbeaten in his first 16 games and has a chance to achieve another victory over Florida State. He currently shows a 16-1-1 career record at the UF Helm, and he's got the opportunity of matching Ole Miss Johnny Vaught for the most victories by a coach in his first two years at the Southeastern Conference head coaching position. Uh, just a fantastic job by Galen Hall since he took over the reins of the University of Florida's football program. So the Florida State Seminoles get ready to kick the football off, and they will kick it away. And you're looking at Wayne Williams, and it will be Ricky Natiel, number 18. The kickoff man is Derek Schmidt for the Florida State University Seminoles as we get ready to get this afternoon's football game underway. Derek Schmidt, one of the best kickers in college football. Sarasota, Florida. Moves to it. Underway. It's going to be Ricky Natiel on the two. He's at the five. He's across the 10. Cuts out at the 15-yard line and up to the 21-yard line before he is brought down. Bringing him down was Eric Williams, number 17 for the Florida State University Seminoles. So the Gators go to work now as Kerwin Bell leads the team. And here you see the stats that he has achieved this year. Offensively, Anderson, Williams, Natiel, Ray McDonald, Rodney Jones in the skill positions. Across the front, Williams, Zimmerman, McCarthy, Jimmy Davis, and Jack Jerzina. You know, it's funny we talk about the skill positions. There better be a lot of skill in that offensive line this afternoon or the Gators will be in trouble. Well, they've had to make a lot of changes, and I think that each time they've risen to the occasion. And here is Kerwin Bell chatting the signals. The give-off goes to Neil Anderson, cuts outside, and he is out of bounds on the far side at the 26-yard line. We need to mention that Sam Garland is getting a shot uh, as a starter this afternoon. Big Sam Garland is a senior playing left tackle for the Gators. Defensively for the Knowles, Gray, Williams, Jones, Stroud, McGowan, Nichols, and from Houston, Texas, Garth Jacks, Martin Mayhew, Stanley Shriver, Greg Newell, and Eric Williams are the deep backs for the It'll be second from the five at the 26-yard line for the Florida Gators in the I formation of China. And the give goes to Anderson, and he's got the first down. Neil Anderson, the ball carrier, the senior from Graceville, Florida, the most prolific rusher in the history of the University of Florida. Well, the Gators get a first down right out of the chute. They've had problems getting off to a fast start, but this afternoon they get a first down in their first series. First and ten. The 32-yard line, Neil Anderson. He and John L. Williams, they call them Rural Express. Anderson from Graceville and John L. Williams from Palatka. Anderson gets the ball again and to the 36-yard line. So uh, Florida has kept the football thus far on the ground. We are just into the first quarter. 14 minutes and 5 seconds left to play in the first period, no score. Neil Anderson uh, this week named all-conference at the tailback position, the leading career rusher in the University of Florida history. You know, he's going to be facing some guys up front that the Seminoles are very proud of. Isaac Williams, Todd Stroud, Gerald Nichols, a lot of experience down front for the Knowles on defense. Second down at the 36-yard line now, and John L. Williams on the counter gets the carry and goes. 
close to the 38-yard line before he is stacked up. Gerald Nichols, the junior right tackle from St. Louis, Missouri, brings him down for the Florida State University Seminoles. John L. has had an excellent career and all-purpose back here at Florida. He is a fine blocker, pass catcher, and an excellent runner inside. If the Florida State Seminoles were in the Southeastern Conference, they would rank fourth in total defense behind the Gators, Auburn, and LSU. They give up 306 yards a game, so they've got a strong defensive unit on the field. Third and two at the 39-yard line now for the Gators, and Neil Anderson gets the call trying to turn outside and does and gets the first down, bumped out of bounds on the far side in front of the FSU bench by the strong side linebacker, Fred Jones. Garth Jacks, number 84, almost making the play in the backfield, but Neil Anderson was able to escape and pick up that first down. Just a lot of natural ability by the Florida tailback. First down and 10 at the 43-yard line as the University of Florida controls the football in the opening moments of the football game in front of a sellout crowd, I would imagine, here at Florida Field. We don't have that word officially, but I don't think there's an empty seat in the house. Might be a record crowd today. Split backfield now behind Kerwin Bell. The pitch going to John L. Williams, and he's across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Flag on the play. Bringing him down, Todd Stroud, the nose guard, and Stanley Shriver, the strong safety. Daryl Grade, number 65, the Knowles senior outside linebacker, doing a nice job turning that play in. Looks like the Gators uh, get a little five penalty and are going to be set back. So the officials will march it off for the hold against the Florida Gators. Let's see if we can take a peek at the action. Isaac Williams on a slant. There you see number 65, Daryl Gray. I don't think we picked up the holding penalty, but the umpire picked it up, and that's the important uh, call. I saw two nice blocks there by Tom Petty, 85, and also by Neil Anderson. John L. Williams ranking third on the Gators' all-time rushing list, 2,389 yards coming into today's game. Well, the Gators have yet to put the ball in the air. Perhaps this might be the first time of the game. First and 18 at the 35-yard line, and they are in the eye formation, still operating in their own territory. They give off to Neil Anderson. He spins off one man to the 36-yard line before he's brought down by FSU. Gerald Nichols, the first man in to hit him along with the weak side linebacker Paul McGowan, sophomore from Winter Park. That's your part of the world. Yeah, I live in Winter Park. I saw Paul McGowan play some great high school football for the Winter Park Wildcats, and he's done a super job at Florida State. He's just a sophomore. Number 38, Paul McGowan. 12 minutes and 8 seconds to play first quarter. No score in our football game at Florida Field. The Gators and the Seminoles. Second and 18 for Florida. Split backfield behind Bell. He drops the throw. First pass of the game. Throws. He's got John L. Williams right at the 42-yard line. And the completion to the 42-yard line for John L. Williams puts the Gators in a little bit better position right now. But there's still 11 yards to go to get a first. And they have advanced the football to the 42-yard line. And the Seminole defense has been strong this afternoon. The Knowles had a lot of success getting to Vinny Testaverde, the Miami quarterback. Uh, they got to him 10 sacks. We saw that time some pressure from Isaac Williams, number 45 from the outside. Here's Kerwin Bell looking at the Knowles defense, and he's under some pressure and throws, and it is complete to Frankie Neal. First down at the 31-yard line. Neal, the junior from Okeechobee on a post. Beautiful reception. Caught four touchdown passes this year. Watch Kerwin Bell's ability to escape the sack. You see coming from the outside, some pressure from the Seminoles, but uh, Kerwin Bell has that ability to, to avoid the sack and get rid of the football. 27-yard completion. First and 10 for the Gators at the 31-yard line, and they're in FSU territory. FSU with a three-down lineman three linebackers, high formation for Florida. The pitch to John, no, no rather, is to Neil Anderson, who goes to the 30-yard line, so a one-yard gain on the play. Fred Jones, a strong side linebacker, brings him down. Real nice job by Fred Jones. He was knocked to his knees temporarily, bounced right back up immediately to make the tackle. Fred Jones is a junior from Miami, Florida. There we're seeing Bobby Bowden's career record, 154-64-2 at FSU, a tremendous record as well. His four victories over Florida, the most for any coach in FSU history. Ten minutes, 15 seconds to play first quarter. No score. Second down nine. Ball on the 30-yard line. Gators 
in possession, and Irwin Bell looks to throw. He does. He's got John L. Williams. John L's inside the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, and he's down to the five-yard line, the six before he's brought down. Well, John, John L. Williams makes a lot of things happen. Oh, every Saturday ball. afternoon, it seems like John L. Williams is in the flat by himself. Look at the Knowles rushing. You see, rushing by the inside linebacker, Fred Jones comes in. John L escapes into the flat, untouched. Watch this little wrinkle. 220 pounds, and he's got the ability to make that quick little move. Look at the hustle by Garth Jacks. Garth Jacks coming from behind to make the tackle on the Gator, or excuse me, on the Seminole six-yard line. First and goal at the six-yard line. The pitch goes to Neil Anderson, trying to turn it outside. He's inside the five, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. The Gators draw first blood this afternoon at Florida Field against the Florida State Seminoles. A lot of speed by Neil Anderson on the corner right there, Jim Gallagher. Here goes the pitch to the tailback. 900 yards, over 900 yards this year for this young man. John L. gets a little bit of a block on Garth Jacks. Garth can't make the tackle. Neil just dives into the corner of that end zone for a big six. We go for the extra point. It is Jeff Dawson, Lantana, Florida. The hold will come from Ray Criswell. Bird, the snapper, his foot is into it, and it is good. And Florida leads FSU 7 to nothing. We'll be back with more after this. 7 to nothing lead. You know, sometimes the guys that start a fight are the guys that only get on the field three or four times a ball game. They don't mind wasting their energy, but the guys on offensive defense need to save themselves as we look at the offensive starters for the Seminoles. Chip Ferguson, a freshman, gets the starting nod at quarterback. He's done an excellent job coming in late in the season. The give off goes to the tailback. Straight up the middle, Chuck Wells, and he is stacked up at the line. Leon Pennington, the first guy to greet him there, and there's a flag on the play. Well, we defensively for the Gators, Miller, Duhart, Pennington, Brown, Armstrong, Williams, and Alonzo Johnson. The deep back, Stacy Knight, White, and Williams. What we have to realize about this Seminole offense is they, they have a rushing game that if, again, they were in the Southeastern Conference, would be number three in the conference, only behind strong teams like Auburn and Georgia. And we know what kind of running games Auburn and Georgia has. So the Knowles are real proud of their running game. Actually, they've got 900 more yards rushing the football than the Gators have. And they're going at the Gators on this first play, but they meet a stone wall. Look at Alonzo Johnson, Alonzo Mitts. Well, the penalty was against Florida for personal foul, and it moves the football to the 35-yard line and gives them first and 10 at the 35. Chip Ferguson, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina. You don't see, this guy's not a redshirt freshman. He's a true freshman. Well, they've used four different quarterbacks so far this year, and Ferguson at the end of the season has emerged as the starter. And uh, the give off now by Ferguson goes to his tailback, Victor Floyd, a freshman from Pensacola, and he goes to the 40-yard line before Pennington and Alonzo Johnson bring him down for the Gators. Again, as a point of reference, as we look at Victor Floyd, seven yards per carry. Now, he doesn't have the big numbers, 900 yards uh, individually, but that's only because the Knowles alternate tailbacks. Victor Floyd, Keith Ross, Tony Smith, a lot of quality at that tailback position for the Knowles, and they rotate those young men in and out of the ball game. Second and five at the 40 for the Seminoles as the Gator defense digs in. Florida with four down linemen, and uh, Ferguson again gives off to the running back. Put on the play. Let's see who recovered. The give off was to Victor Floyd, and there's a scramble. position. Gives off to Neil Anderson. Comes to the near side. And he is across the 40 to the 39-yard line before FSU knocks him out of bounds. Paul McGowan, the weak side linebacker, takes him out. 
And Stanley Scott, number 83, had a shot at Neal in the backfield, but Neal was able to get away. Watch Scott make a dive for Neal right there, but Neal runs through the tackle. Garth Jacks can't tackle him with the arm. Neal Anderson, the big, strong tailback, picks up about six yards. Nice blocking job by John L. Williams, second and four at the 39-yard line now for the University of Florida Gators. They go with a split backfield in receivers left and right. As FSU puts five men up front, the pitch goes to John L. Williams, and he is stacked up as he hits the line of scrimmage. Stanley Scott, the senior right tackle from Drayton, makes the hit. A flag on the play. Seven minutes and 34 seconds to play first quarter. Florida leads 7-0. Side on this play, nullifying a great play by Stanley Scott, who made the tackle in the backfield. Five yard mark on. Here we see big Jeff Zimmerman, Jim Gallagher, named to the Camp All American team. And what a tribute to that uh, fine offensive tackle. Big, strong Jeff Zimmerman. He's done a great job all year long and during the uh, middle of the season. Had some injury problems, but has come back. And I think. Unless you're with Florida football every week, you don't realize how tough it's been for that offensive line this year. And Jeff Zimmerman, as you mentioned, has played hurt many a Saturday afternoon. First Burke and ten. At the 34-yard line. Bell chants the signals. The pitch to Anderson cuts back. He's across the 30. He's at the 25. He's across the 20 and comes out of bounds on the near sideline at the 16-yard line. Stanley Shiver runs him out. The strong safety for the Florida State Seminoles. Gator offensive line just came off on a wave, or like a wave on that previous play. Very impressive. Watch that offensive line blow out. Watch John L. throw his block, giving Neal the opening to cut back. And with that speed, once he penetrates the line of scrimmage, he's going to pick up 10 or 15 yards. Picked up 19, first and 10 at the 15-yard line. For the Gators, high formation now. Bell looks over FSU. Bell's give goes to John L. Williams, and John L. gets a couple of yards inside the 15-yard line, but FSU is right there. Fred Jones, a strong side linebacker, is the man that hit him and got some help there, too, from Scott. Fred Jones, the linebacker, number 55, doing a nice job for the Knowles making that play. Uh, Neil Anderson is approaching that 1,000-yard marker, Jim Gallagher. Uh, he'll be the only the second back in the history of the University of Florida to get 1,000 yards in one season. There we see John L. Williams, who's made that uh, possible. Neil Anderson is approaching that record. It's second down and eight on the 13-yard line now for the Gators. And Kerwin Bell looks to throw. Williams tripped him up, the only guy that was there. Well, again, the Knowles are getting caught. You see Fred Jones there letting Anthony Williams escape into the flat, and Anthony has those wide receiver hands, just like John L. Williams does coming out of that backfield. That's a that's a tough offense to stop when you have a fullback that can catch anything near him. He was doing his Edwin Moses imitation, trying to leap over him there. Yeah, he thought he was a hurtler, didn't he? First and goal at the three-yard line for the Gators. Eye formation. Anthony Williams is the up back. Neil Anderson at the top of the eye. The pitch goes to Anderson off the right side. And the end zone for the score. Neil Anderson picks up his second touchdown of the afternoon. Runs right into the end zone. And Florida leads it 13 to nothing. The try for the extra point is up next. Again, look at this offensive line. Look at big Jeff Zimmerman. Look at John L. Williams. Look at Tom Petty, the tight end. The tailback dances into the end zone untouched. Try for the extra point. Ray Criswell, the holder. Jeff Dawson, the place kicker, waits for the snap. Boots it, and it is good. With the score, Florida 14, FSU nothing. We'll be back. Florida, and you know he has got to be high on the shopping list for a lot of professional football teams. What an afternoon he's having and what a great career he's had at the University of Florida. And Neil Anderson will graduate in May. He's been here four years. They say an athlete can't do that, but he's going to do it. Deep kickoff, and it goes out of the end zone. John David Francis, the freshman walk-on kicker from Stark, Florida, as Keith Ross watch it roll away and 
so it will come out to the 20 yard line. Well, we're seeing that uh, drive five plays, 35 yards, started with a turnover. Alonzo Johnson coming up with the fumble recovery. Neil Anderson ending the drive, sprinting into the end zone from three yards out. So far today, Florida's had the football for seven minutes and 45 seconds, and FSU has had it for a minute and 10 seconds. You're looking at Bobby Bowden a moment ago talking to Chip Ferguson, his freshman quarterback from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and there was a flag on the last play. The call is going to go against the Florida State Seminoles, and so it is going to be marched back to the 10-yard line as we go to the sideline, and John Nugent for this report. Jim, and speaking with the Gator coaches before their game, they're very concerned with Florida State's play-action passing game. Look for the Gators to double the wideouts as much as possible. One other thing, you guys said it would get cool down here in November. 104 <laughs> degrees on the turf. Gentlemen? Sorry about that. First and 10 at the 10, Chip Ferguson at the quarterback position, and his give-off goes to the fullback, Cletus Jones, straight up the middle, and he is stacked up. Bring him down, Alonzo Mitz and Alonzo Johnson. Well, again, we need to mention the Knowles are very proud of their running game. They come into Florida Field averaging 230 yards per game on the ground, but so far they haven't had any success. John Nugent was mentioning the uh, play-action pass. The Seminoles like to get the ball to their wide receivers. Hassan Jones, number 88, is one of the best wide receivers in the country. Second down nine at the 11-yard line now. FSU with one first down this afternoon, Florida with seven, and the give-off is going to go to the tailback, and that is Smith, Tony Smith, and he rips off the right side before Leon Pennington brings him down. Tony Smith was one of the greatest high school career uh, rushing tailbacks in Dade County history, and he's getting a chance to shine this year at Florida State, doing a nice job. Jim and I will be picking our selection of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter. I gotta tell you, Neil Anderson looks pretty good right now. Third and one on the 20 yard line, or rather third and 11 on the 20 yard line, as Ferguson gives off, and again the give off goes to Smith, and Smith is stacked up after a couple of yards. Alonzo Johnson, right there, All-American linebacker. We talked about Neil Anderson being looked at by the Pro Scouts. Boy, you know this guy is gonna be wanted. Well, that speed is a, a primary attribute that you need to play defense, and Alonzo Johnson has it in abundance. We see Lewis Berry coming on the field, a fine punter, 42.7 yards on the average. Ricky Natio, fine return man for the University of Florida, as he stands back deep. And now we have an FSU timeout on the field. We'll give you the situation, four minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first quarter, and the Gators lead by a score of 14 to nothing over Florida State by virtue of two running touchdowns by Neil Anderson. Well, before the game, we were expecting to see a powerful running game by the Seminoles. The, the Gators have had problems running the football. You know, they ranked seventh in the Southeastern Conference running the football. They're much more potent when they throw the football down the field, but this afternoon, the Gators come out of the chute with a great running game. You can win a 1986 Ford Ranger, the Sunny's Fight and Gator Truck. Just register at any participating Sunny's Real Pit Barbecue Florida location. You can also win a Suzuki motorbike, a Columbia bicycle, or a Toshiba jam box. So go buy Sonny's today. I think the Knowles had a mental breakdown right here. One of their specialty team members forgot to get on the field, so they had to waste a timeout to have 11 men out there for the punt. So FSU's Barry, their booter, stands back there at about the 10-yard line, ready to kick it away. Line of scrimmage is the 23 as he gets it off. And it is long chases it back and takes it down at about the 20 and has to run backfield, turns up to the 21 yard line. So an excellent kick by FSU. Their special teams do a good job getting down. Natil does his job on the return, giving the Gators a good field position at the 21 yard line and John Hadley brought him down for FSU. Joey Nicoletto uh, gave his body up out there on that punt return and is, and is slightly injured and is, uh, needs some assistance to leave the field. Those specialty team guys are called kamikazes, and uh, they really go after each other. That kick was a 65-yarder. Ten attempts, 54 yards this afternoon for Neil Anderson. He needs seven yards to reach 1,000. Neil comes into this ball game uh, averaging 4.4 yards per carry this afternoon. He's carrying it at a 5.4 per, per carry clip. 
First and ten at the 21-yard line. As Kerwin Bell looks at the FSU defense, the Seminoles with the three down linemen, the two outside linebackers, and the two inside backers on the gap, and the give-off goes to the tailback. And that is Neil Anderson straight up the middle. Lenny Chambers, the nose guard, makes the hit after Anderson picks up a couple. He's about five yards away now from the 1,000-yard plateau. The Knowles alternate two strong seniors at that nose guard position. Todd Stroud, Lenny Chambers. Lenny Chambers coming up with the play that time. Number 68 from Deland, Florida. Second and nine at the 22-yard line for the University of Florida Gators. They sit on a 14-0 lead in the first quarter formation being used by Florida as Bell pitches to Anderson. Anderson turns upfield and goes to the 24-yard line. Paul McGowan makes the tackle on Neil Anderson. That's well, nice to see Greg Cleveland back in action. Number 64 at offensive tackle for the Florida Gators. Greg Cleveland's been out with some knee problems most of the, most of the year, but the senior's getting his final shot out there this afternoon from Orlando Edgewater. Greg Cleveland, number 64. Two minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first quarter. Florida 14, Florida State nothing. Third down and eight. All spotted at the 23-yard line. As Kerwin Bell sends Anderson in motion, gives off to Connor Williams on the ball. He's got the first down. by John L. Williams, Bill Richardson. The left cornerback from Fort Walton Beach makes the hit for FSU. Well, you know the Knowles can put the pressure on the quarterback. They just get caught in a twist right here. A big block is made on Fred Jones, and John L. Williams is in the secondary very quickly. A nice call by the Gators, and they caught Florida State stunning and were able to take advantage of the, of the stunt, come up with a big play on the draw. First and 10 now for the Gators as they keep possession of the football and keep their drive going for the I formation. And now Kerwin Bell drops the throw and unloads long. He's looking for Ray McDonald, and it is incomplete. A little bit high. He would have needed two step ladders to get up there and get that one, and Martin Mayhew was covering him pretty well for FSU. One point needs to be made, though. He had the time. He had a lot of protection. The line did a fine job. And as we mentioned, the Knowles know how to get to the quarterback. They gave Vinny Testaverde from the Miami Hurricanes all kind of problems. Kerwin Bell has the same ability or more than Testaverde has, though, and if he gets the time, he's going to deliver that football. Second down, 10 at the 34-yard line now for the Gators. As Bell waits for the snap with the eye formation, the pitch goes to Neil Anderson, and Neil Anderson at the 35 outside, still on his feet across the 40, and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Very close for the first down. Greg Newell, the sophomore free safety from Panama City, takes him back, and he has just picked up enough yardage to get 1,000 yards in a season. Second back in Florida history. Watch the blocking at the point of attack. Big Jeff Zimmerman, John L. Williams making the block on the outside. Ray McDonald now is downfield fighting Deion Sanders off. Neil Anderson picks up another six yards because Ray McDonald was hustling downfield. Oh, you get him! Just to show how much acceleration he has, Florida State has some of the quickest deep backs in the country. And he was right there, speed-wise. Third and one. The give-off goes to... Or rather, John L. Williams, and he is stacked up. Let's see if he's got the first down. Well, it's very close because Fred Jones made a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Fred Jones fighting off the block, but it's going to be a close call. Perhaps they're going to measure. No, they're signaling fourth down right now. Didn't get enough uh, yardage, and so the Gators are going to kick away. Ray Criswell is in the football game. Fred Jones, number 55, fill the hole. Jimmy Davis is coming over to trap. Greg Cleveland misses Fred Jones. He was looking for him, but found him too late. Fred Jones stepped right up and made the tackle. Curtis Thomas, 22, waits for the football for FSU. He's at the 15 and will down to the 17-yard line. Oh, the Gators special teams were down in a hurry. And taking him was number 97, Roland Cummings, and also number 36, Anthony Williams. Well, that's a great stand by the Florida State defense. You know, uh, old momentum is, is very fickle, and the Gators had it on their side, but the Knowles rose to the occasion and stopped the Gators right there, forcing a punt. 
Well, Ray Criswell got off a very nice one, a 43-yarder for the Gators. A minute eight to play first quarter. Florida 14 and the Seminoles nothing, and the Noles go to work offensively. Florida's defense digs in, and Ferguson at the controls. Now Ferguson rolling out the pass, throws out in the flat. Number 44 hit at the 21-yard line by Ricky Knight, a strong safety from right here in the city of Gainesville. The Knolls do not get the ball to the fullback anywhere near as often as the Gators do. They like to throw the ball more often to their wideouts, but on this occasion, they're going to get the ball out to Wells, and it looks like he never had possession of that ball. But they're going to give the reception to him anyway. At the 21, it's second down and seven now for the Seminoles, and that's the first first down for FSU. Rolling out now is Ferguson, and he's looking and throws. Almost picked off by Florida. Almost picked off by Curtis Stacy. Darren Holloman, 24, was the intended receiver, and Stacy did a great job and almost picked it off. Watch a strong safety coming on the blitz, but he's picked up very nicely by... Tony Smith, Chip Ferguson continues to roll out, looking down the field. The young man's just a freshman, but he throws it right in the midst of three Gators. Curtis Stacy almost picks that ball off. With 23 seconds to go in the first quarter, it's third down seven on the 21-yard line for FSU as they come out of the huddle. 88, Hassan Jones to the left side to the bottom of your screen as Ferguson goes with a split backfield. And the Florida with the three-down lineman trying to put the pressure on as Ferguson drops way, way back. Throws a short one out to Wells, incomplete on the safety valve. Florida had him pretty well covered there, too. That brings up fourth down, and the Seminoles will have to boot away. But the Florida defense did an excellent pursuit job. Well, you're looking at the number one defense, total defense in the Southeastern Conference. Charlie Bailey doing a great job in his first year here in Gainesville as a defensive coordinator. There you see Lewis Berry coming on the field. The Seminoles are forced to punt. The Gator defense rises to the occasion. Ricky Natio, the University of Florida return man from Newberry, Florida. 5'9", 180, a junior. Been a mainstay for this great Gator football team in 85. As Lewis Berry boots it, it goes high. And a little wobbly. Natio at the 32-yard line, at the 35, outside at the 40, inside, and across to the 40 yard line or 44 yard line before he's brought down but there was a flag on the play taking him out was Paul McGowan for the University of Florida or rather for FSU yeah Paul McGowan hustling down the field right there we do have a flag on the play we're gonna have to wait it's a clip against the Gators the Gators were in a position to get great field position again but they're gonna be backed up somewhat the Seminoles are have a break so it's going to be marched off now against the Gators with just five seconds left to play in the first quarter. And the Gators leading 14 to nothing, but that's going to set the football way back to the 28-yard line. There you see Paul McGowan getting ready to make the tackle, and uh, Steve Stipe makes a middle error coming up and hitting... Uh, Number 42, Cletus Jones, the, the great fullback from the Seminoles in the back, an obvious clip. First and 10 at the 29-yard line now for Florida. As Kerwin Bell pitches to Anderson, Anderson goes to the 30-yard line, picks up a couple of tough yards. Gerald Nichols brings him down for FSU. And that is the end of the first quarter. Gators 14, Seminoles nothing. We'll be right back. So we begin the second quarter as we look at the University of Florida Gator offense. And we've got to pay some tribute to what that offensive line has been able to accomplish this afternoon and how they have allowed Mr. Neil Anderson to have an excellent first quarter. Well, they're off to a great start. Obviously, we got three quarters to go, but that offensive line has been the whipping boy a lot of times this season. Despite the fact the Gators have had a tremendous year, there's always Monday morning quarterbacking going on and saying, well, if we could have blocked so-and-so, if we could have done this and that. But that offensive line uh, is doing a super job here this afternoon with that running game. The passing game, they've done well consistently all year. The running game is kind of misfired from time to time. Second and nine at the 30 for the Gators. High formation as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. And he's going long, looking for Ray McDonald too far downfield and McDonald getting pretty good coverage there from Eric Williams 17 the right side quarterback from 
Safety Harbor. Ray McDonald, a senior from Belle Glade, Florida, playing his last football game at the University of Florida. 5'11", 185. Great. Here first, are the first half stats. First quarter stats. Uh, the Gators dominating running game, also getting the ball in the air. Total 153 yards. When you have the ball, you're able to get the ball down the field and stack those yardage uh, Stack that yardage up. Third and nine as Kerwin Bell again looks to throw, and he's under a lot of pressure, brought down way behind the line of scrimmage. Isaac Williams, 45, a senior from Sanford, Florida, comes in to take Bell down behind the line of scrimmage, and that means the Gators will have to kick out of there. Just a nice effort by Isaac Williams. There wasn't really a breakdown right there. Kerwin could not find a receiver open, and uh, Florida State was putting the pressure up front and covering uh, well on the play and was able to come up with a sack. Waiting for the snap is Ray Criswell, the punter from Orange Park, Florida, a senior, as he kicks it off and gets off a high one. Deion Sanders takes it at the 33, the 35, the 40, at the 45, cuts out at the 50-yard line. He's across the 40-yard line, inside the 35, and still on his feet, and they get him at the 33-yard line. But a great return for Deion Sanders. Cornerback for the Florida State University Seminoles. And Reggie Corlew, 44, brought him down for the Gators. North Fort Myers High School, Deion Sanders. He was drafted to play baseball. He can stuff a basketball in the rim anytime he wants to, and he's got great football ability. Look at him in the open field, putting a little wrinkle on right there. Just a tremendous natural athlete. I saw this young man play in the Florida Georgia High School All-Star game, and you could tell he was a star from the first day I saw him. First and 10 at the 33-yard line now for FSU. This is their best field position of the afternoon. Chip Ferguson, the quarterback, pitches. The pitch going to Tony Smith, and Smith is hit and hit hard by the Gator defense as they swarm him down right at the line of scrimmage. First in, Ron Moten. The boot by Criswell was 45 yards in the return, 34. Well, they like to pitch the ball to the tailback, and there's Tony Smith getting on the outside. Alonzo Mitz, Leon Pennington coming up with a tackle. The Knolls need to take advantage of this field position. they got to get on the board. That's what they're thinking. We've got to get on the board now that we've penetrated Gator territory. Second and 11 at the 34-yard line as the Gator defense takes a long look at him and puts the pressure on. And here is Ferguson rolling the throw, and he throws, and it is incomplete. Getting hit as he touched the ball was the tight end, Pat Carter, and it was Curtis Stacy, a left corner man, a sophomore from Bronson, Florida, who really put a hit on him. You're, ta you're talking about courage. Big Pat Carter, the tight end, weighs 255 pounds. Ferguson's going to deliver a strike, but Curtis Stacy doesn't care about the collision. He's going to make the hit, knocks the ball loose. Just a nice play by the cornerback, Curtis Stacy. A lot of courage by that young man. That brings up third down 11 on the 34-yard line now for FSU. Florida now with a four-down lineman as they go to the nickel, and Ferguson gives off on the draw to Tony Smith, and Tony Smith is brought down after about two yards. Pennington and Arthur White combining on him to stop him. Leon Pennington, again, that senior leadership we're talking about from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Leon Pennington just making a big hit on Tony Smith. Here's the excellent field goal kicker now for the Florida State University Seminoles, Derek Schmidt, and the snap will come from Marty Riggs. Kirk Coker, number 11, will be the holder. The leading freshman place kicker in the country last year with the Knowles from Riverview High School in Sarasota, Florida. It's from the 37, a 47-yard attempt as he puts his foot into it, and it is not good. So the Gators take over the football as Schmidt's field goal attempt is not good. The Florida defense, the magnificent 11 this afternoon. Yeah, you know the Knowles are shaking their head on the sideline. They cannot believe they've gotten off to such a poor start. The Gators have had that emotion in the first quarter, and now Schmidt, who, as we had mentioned, is one of the best kickers in the country, is not able to deliver the field goal. The winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan admires the spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Most Valuable Player of the Game Award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. First and 10 at the 31 for the Gators. They're in their own territory. Neil 21, the motion man behind Kerwin. 
Winbell, the quarterback, throws out in the flat, and he's got Brett Wickman, and Wickman driven out of bounds in front of the FSU bench at the 36-yard line, and taking him out, Garth Jacks and Martin Mayhew. Martin Mayhew doing a nice job uh, coming up and covering Wickman on that quick screen. That was a quick screen. Tried to get Wickman isolated out there in the flat, and that was a nice play. Picked up six yards. Wickman, a junior from here in Gainesville, Florida, an excellent possession receiver. Very sure hands. Second and five at the 36-yard line now with the ball on the far side hash mark for the Gators with the eye. Bell's give off is going to go to Anderson. Rips off the right side. He's got the first down. Out of bounds in front of the FSU bench at the 43-yard line or 44-yard line is where they mark it down. So Neil Anderson picks up some more yardage and Tracy Sanders, the free safety, takes him out. Well, the Gators are dominating at the point of attack. Big Jeff Zimmerman doing a nice job. Jimmy Davis, Fred McCart Frank McCarthy, the center. Greg Cleveland seeing action again, number 64 at the tackle position. Big David Williams, a freshman from Lakeland, just doing a great job up front for that Gator offensive unit. First and 10 at the 44-yard line for the Florida Gators. It's like They're a checkoff, uh, Jim. That's what it, yeah, audible out. Bell throws out in the flat, complete to Wickman. He's going to be close to a first down. Martin Mayhew again there for FSU, but a nice catch by Wickman. And it looks like, well, I'm not going to call it ahead of time. I've done that before and been wrong. I know that shocks you to hear that I've been wrong before, but every once in a while I have, so I'm going to hold off and let the officials call this one. That's going to be very close. Uh, we saw Kerwin Bell making the checkoff right there. He saw Wickman could pick up a quick five or six yards, so he went right to him. That's a very intelligent play by the sophomore quarterback. It's hard to imagine that Bell is a sophomore because he's so poised and cool under pressure. Cool breeze, Bell. It wasn't good for the first down, so that brings up second down, less than a yard. The ball at the 46-yard line, and getting the call is Neil Anderson, and he's got the first down. Paul McGowan doing a nice job, number 38 from the inside linebacker position, filling the hole, but Neil Anderson was able to leap over him and pick up the first down. So the Gators pick up another first down, keep possession of the football, keep their drive going, and they sit on a 14-0 lead. Two touchdowns by Neil Anderson, and FSU's lone attempt at the board came on a field goal attempt from 47 yards away by Schmidt, which was not good. Hard to believe he's got 76 yards midway through the second quarter, isn't it? First and 10 at the 44. The pitch goes to John L. Williams, and Williams is hit and hit hard by the FSU defense just as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Fred Jones, the first guy to greet him along with Stanley Scott. Jones from Miami and Scott from Brandon, Florida. A little ways outside of Tampa. Anthony Williams, 36, checks in. John L. Williams, 22, checks out as we look at Bobby Bowden on the far side. His son, Terry, is a head coach at Salem College in West Virginia and has done an excellent job. It's up in West Virginia, right? Yep. Got a daughter there. Second and 10 at the 44-yard line. As Kerwin Bell rolls out, throws, and it is complete to the 30-yard line. And a nice reception by Ricky Natale. And FSU's corner man was pretty upset about it. That's Martin Mayhew because he doesn't think it's a reception. Well, he thought he knocked the ball loose, but... Again, we got to mention that Ricky Natil was able to come up with the reception because Kerwin Bell was all alone. Look at Kerwin Bell. Look at the time he has. Look at uh, Jimmy Davis fighting off Isaac Williams up front. Now, the, the turf cannot make you fumble the ball. You, obviously, you have to have control when you hit it. It, it looks like Ricky did on that play. It was a clean reception. Good call by the officials. Double reverse. Ray McDonald turns up field. He's inside at the 25. to another first down. Ray McDonald on the double reverse goes to the right side and really threaded through the traffic. Let's take a look at it as Anderson hands off to McDonald. And he's got that big, powerful blocker, Kerwin Bell, out in front of him. And Kerwin ducks his head and delivers an elbow and eats some turf on the way down. But it was a nice play. A lot of courage by Ray McDonald continuing to fight and struggle forward for the first down. 
There's Greg Cleveland back in action. We're glad to see him healthy and playing again. Kerwin, seven for nine for 96 yards this afternoon. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. The pitch goes to John L. Williams, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down. FSU's defense sniffed that one out. Paul Maybe McGowan again here. makes the hit, a Not weak side McGowan. linebacker. Although there's nothing weak Bill looking about him. Uh, he's a strong kid. I think he, uh, when he was at Winter Park High School, he won the 4A high school weightlifting championship in his weight class. First downs for FSU, one this afternoon for Florida, 12. Well, again, Bobby Bowden, we know he's shaking his head over there on the sideline. He just can't believe that his team's got off to such a poor start. The Gators again are threatening. Second and 10 at the 20-yard line, and the give-off again goes to John L. Williams, but FSU's defense fills the hole right there, and they bring him down because they were right there. Felton Hayes, a freshman linebacker from Brandon, uh, makes the hit, getting some help there, too, from Gerald Nichols and Garth Jack. So they all combine on that one and bring him down. That's a short gain to the 19-yard line, but that was a tough yard for John L. Williams. So that brings up third down. Yeah, the Knowles doing a real nice job right here. Uh, circling the wagons and tightening up their defense and forcing the Gators into a third and long situation. Let's see if Kerwin Bell has the time or if the Knowles can put the pressure on him. Bell with a split backfield behind him and the Knowles with four down linemen. Bell dropping and he's under a lot of pressure and is brought down at the 27 yard line. Darryl Gray, a senior from Lake Wales, Florida, the outside linebacker came blitzing through and made that hit on Kerwin Bell so that brings up the field goal try. Well, the Knowles have great speed on the outside, as do the Gators on defense, and they were able to force with that outside pass rush. Kerwin Bell had to step up, and Gray was able to come up with a sack. That was just a, a fine effort by that Seminole defense. The kick is going to come from the 34, so it'll be a 44-yard attempt by Jeff Dawson. The hole from Ray Criswell. It looks good. Let's see what they give it. They say no. It's off to the right side. Well, he had the distance. It was just off to the right. Tough to look at it through the angle. And so it falls, and FSU takes over the football. It'll be first down and 10 for the Seminole. You cannot overstate emotion in this great rivalry. Right now, the Gators had a tremendous edge in the first quarter. The beginning of the second quarter, the Gators had an edge in emotion. Right now, the Knowles have a chance to get their act together. Their defense just did a super job of stopping the Gators, preventing a score. And now let's see if that Knoll offense can get some emotion on their side. So far, the Gators have dominated. Ferguson at the quarterback spot, and Ferguson's give. No, he fakes it beautifully and throws deep out into the flat, and it is incomplete. And there's a flag on the play. Hassan Jones was the intended receiver, and he was hit by one of the Gators over there. Looked like it was Adrian White, number two, and they dropped the flag. White and Jarvis Williams were there, and now the officials are talking, and we'll see how the call is going to go. There was a flag dropped. Personal foul against the University of Florida. And so that's going to give the Seminoles an excellent advantage. Watch now as Ferguson throws and Hassan Jones goes up high. And there's the hit after he had gone up and come down. Yeah, Jarvis Williams had perfect coverage and Adrian White just came over and delivered a late hit uh, along the sideline. And it was an uh, obvious penalty. So the advance is to the 43-yard line because of the penalty for FSU. So it'll be first down for the Seminoles. Tom Petty, the tight end on the sideline. That hurts. Anytime you get a penalty, that's just literally a gift. And now the Knowles have got even better field position. They're moving out on their own 43-yard line right now. Holloman and Ross are the backs who will be behind Chip Ferguson, the freshman quarterback. Penalties for FSU, 2 for 15. Florida, 4 for 55 this afternoon. Ferguson looks at the Gator defense and pitches. The pitch goes to Keith Ross coming to the near side. Gets across the midfield stripe and makes a nice carry across the 45 to the 44 before Alonzo Johnson brings him down. Uh, Keith Ross uh, played some professional baseball before he tried college football. He's from Newberry, uh, same high school Ricky Nadeel attended. This kid's got a lot of speed. He's got the ability to get 200 yards in one Saturday afternoon. Watch him make the cut up. 
Alonzo Johnson makes a dive for him, but Ross has, look at the low center of gravity, the great balance. He proceeds on down the field, and the Knolls are inside the Gator 45-yard line. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Chip Ferguson chants the signals and looks at the Gator defense. Ferguson pitches. The pitch again goes to Ross coming to the near side, and he's stacked up as he hits the 40-yard line. Short gain on the carry for Ross and the 7 0s Six minutes and 38 seconds to play in the second quarter, and the Gators lead Florida State 14 to nothing. Well, you don't get uh, those great... Uh great yardage from the tailback position without help up front and Jamie Dukes number 64 is an all-American the Seminoles have a great offensive guard he's from the same high school Orlando Evans that Jeff Zimmerman part is all-American is from second and six at the 40-yard line now for the Seminoles and the give off goes to Keith Ross again and he's drilled behind the line of scrimmage getting in to bring him down was Ricky Knight, the strong side safety on the blitz as he takes him down behind the line. Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue has a great offer. You get a free Gator Coca-Cola collector's bottle with the purchase of any barbecue plate and a Coke available while supplies last at participating Sonny's Florida locations as we looked at the play again. And an awesome block by Big Pat Tomberlin, number 72, a 310-pound freshman offensive guard for the Knowles. He just rolled over on his block right there. That was that counter sweep that the Gators used so successfully. Third and six now for FSU. Ferguson throws, and it is intercepted by Florida as it's tipped into the air. And picking it off is Patrick Miller, and he's at the 21-yard line. A big play, and a flag on the play, too. And it looks like the flag is going to come right in front of the Florida sideline. We'll see what that call is in a minute. But anyway, the ball, meanwhile, is back at the... 21-yard line, a clip being called, and it's against Florida. Well, Chip Ferguson has his tight end, Pat Carter, open, but he just puts a little bit too much heat on the ball. Pat Carter cannot come up with the catch. The ball bounces in the air, and Patrick Miller, who has tremendous athletic ability, comes up with the interception. Now, let's see if we can pick up the clip, but it's going to force the Gators uh, back towards their own goal line, but Patrick Miller coming up with a big turnover. So that gives Florida the football first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. There's Patrick Miller. That's one of the seniors, Panama City, Florida. That senior leadership we were talking about. He came from about seven yards off the ball when it was tipped into the air to pick it up. And the thing about Patrick Miller, he's probably the fourth or fifth fastest player on the Gator roster, and he's a linebacker. That's incredible. Here they come, Kerwin Bell, as you look at the end zone shot. Frank McCarthy is the center, and he will be up over the football, a junior from Lighthouse Point. I formation as Bell takes the football and gives off to Neil Anderson, who is to the 17-yard line before he fumbles on the play. Let's see if they blew the whistle, though, before the ball squirted out. No. The ball the whistle down. The, or the official actually blew the whistle and started walking away from the play. Watch Neil Anderson, Jeff Zimmerman making the block. He's got a little bit of room right there. It was a good call because actually what happened is the ball squirted out after he was already down, so the play was over. Great. Second and 15 at the 17-yard line, and the give-off goes to John L. Williams, tries it on the right side, hits to the 19-yard line for two before he stacked up. Four minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first half, and Florida sits on a 14-0 lead. Neil Anderson, two touchdowns this afternoon, number 27. There you see Rural Express, 22 and 27 control that the Gators uh, have this afternoon continues to eat that clock up. Uh, the first half is progressing rather rapidly as the Gators eat yardage up on the ground. John L. Williams slot with Neal in the slot and now Anderson goes in motion to the right side as Bell gives off and he is stacked up as he touches the football and uh, it would be Jesse Solomon making the hit on John L. Williams. So that's going to bring up fourth down in a kicking situation. A nice job, Jesse Solomon from Madison, Florida. Saw that draw coming all the way. Jumped right on John L. Williams in the backfield. Ray Criswell, two punts this afternoon, averaging 44 yards per boot. Waiting for the 
kick again is Deion Sanders, number two, who had such a fine run back the last time. Low kick, too. He's got some room. At the 45, across the midfield stripe, and now into Florida territory, and down at the 42-yard line goes Sanders, and bringing him down is Anthony Williams, a sophomore out of Tampa Plant High School. Three minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half. Well, this has got to be the best best field position the Knowles have had all afternoon. And so the Seminoles with the football now at the 42-yard line of Florida. That was an uncharacteristic uh, low kick by Criswell right there. Deion Sanders did a nice job just getting what he could get out of that punt return. Given his team great field position. There we see big Jamie Dukes, the All-American offensive guard that the Knowles are so proud of. This young man started every game at Florida State from his freshman year, and that's a tremendous honor. Looks like a penalty call coming up, most likely for a hold, the indication from the field. We're waiting on the call. Well, it looks like the Supreme Court debate out there on this one. The jury is out. National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the Florida Gators. For reservations, call 1-800-CAR-RENT. That is 1-800-CAR-RENT. It is a whole call going against the Seminoles of Florida State. And now he marks off, takes the football back down inside the 20 to the 16-yard line and will be marching it off. So that means that the football now moves to the 26-yard line. Criswell gets another shot at the kick after the hole. Florida opted to go ahead and take the penalty wisely and kick away again. Right. It was a poor punt. The Knowles had great field position. Evidently, one of the Knowles grabbed a gator and didn't let him escape down the field to cover on that punt. And the referees detected the violation, called the flag, so the Gators choose to punt again. So there is Deion Sanders, number two. Waiting on the kick, and Ray Criswell from Orange Park will boot it away for Florida. Criswell gets off. I went off this time around. Dion drops way back and drops the football. It bounces in the air, and he goes across the 25 to the 27-yard line before he's brought down. And Reggie Corlew is down first to hit him for the Gators. Well, you're talking about mistakes uh, being key factors in ball games. That holding violation on the punt caused Florida State about 30 yards in field position. 56-yard boot by Mr. Criswell. At least 30 yards in field position because of a holding violation on the punt team. First and 10 at the 27 now for Florida State, and they're in their own territory. Chip Ferguson is the quarterback, and his give-off goes to the up back in the eye, Keith Ross, and Ross hits to about the 31 before he's brought down, and Arthur White, a sophomore linebacker from Frostproof, makes the tackle for the Gators. Bringing up second down with less than three minutes to play in the first half, and the Gators sit on that 14 to nothing lead. Hard to believe, but right now the Knolls have, I believe, uh, less than 10 yards passing the ball. Four yards passing the ball at this point late in the second quarter. Second and six at the 31-yard line. As Ferguson looks to throw, he's got the time and goes way long. It's going to be intercepted by the Florida Gators. And picking it off was Vernell Brown. Brown, number four, right at the 23-yard line. Senior Vernell Brown from Gainesville, Florida. We keep talking about that senior leadership and those seniors trying to come up with a big play. You see Chip Ferguson leaving the field, shaking his head. He just let the ball flat fly on him right there. He just put a little too much heat on it. Really overthrows badly his, his receiver. And Vernell Brown is playing center field out there. Comes up with a catch. Nice play, Vernell Brown. Excellent play. So first down and 10 at the 25-yard line now for the Florida Gators as they come out of the huddle. That's Ray McDonald 9 splitting to the bottom of your screen. I formation, Kerwin Bell is the quarterback. And Bell fakes the reverse, looks long, and throws for Natillo. He's got it at the 10. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in the end zone for the score. 
Ricky Natillo, the young man from Newberry, Florida, having a great afternoon at Florida Field. Look at the celebration. Oh, yes. 20 to nothing. 2.22 to play, first half. All right, they're going to fake the reverse to Ray McDonough. All that fake does is get the secondary to take a peek in the backfield. When they take a peek, Ricky Nateel blisters right by him. Warp speed, Ricky Nateel. Ricky the Rocket. Dawson with the attempt for the extra point. Criswell the holder. And the kick is good with the score. Florida 21, Seminoles nothing. <laughs> Deep for FSU as Francis gets ready to move to the football. The Gators with a 21 to nothing lead. Booted way high, and Francis puts it almost into the seats. I think he's pumped up. I think that Ricky Natil play even pumped up the uh, kickoff man. I'll tell you, the guy's got to be proud this afternoon is Jerry Anderson because his special teams troops have been doing a great job. One play, 75 yards, 11 seconds. Ricky Natil's bomb from Kerwin Bell. And it was on the money. It was perfectly thrown. Kerwin Bell took one step and delivered that football. What a strike. Look at the passing yards. 171 to 4. Uh, Florida, one of the best passing teams in the South, entering this ball game, and they continue to have great success in the air. Chip Ferguson brings his offensive squad out of the huddle, first and 10 at the 20 for the Seminoles of Florida State. I formation now as Ferguson gives, and his giveoff goes to Ross, and Ross is hit right as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by Alonzo Johnson. Galen Hall, the unflappable Galen Hall. Well, again, we, we need to mention that uh, the Seminoles coming into this ball game had 900 more yards rushing the football than the Gators did. But this afternoon, they're just not able to put that running attack to work. To this point, at, uh, anyway, only to this point. Second and 11 at the 19-yard line. Split backfield behind Ferguson, who again looks to throw. Flag on the play and whistles on the field. A lot of flags on the play. So Mark Salva, the, the tackle, uh, made some quick movements before the snap and the illegal procedure on the Knolls. You called it, and that's the way it's going to go. And let, right now, let's go to the sideline and John Nugent. Jim, the name of that touchdown play is 52 fake reverse. What Ricky Natil does is he fakes like he's going to block, takes off on the post pattern. It's the first time the Gators have used that play all year long, and it comes up for six. Gentlemen? They're 1-0 on that play, then. It's 1,000 so far. Well, that's the kind of play you save for your arch rival. That's the kind of play that gets that guy in the secondary to take that one quick peek into the backfield, and when he does that, it's too late. Ricky Natil is gone. Second and 15 at the 15. Ferguson under a lot of pressure. Dumps a quick safety valve to Wells, and Wells has run out of bounds on the far sideline before he gets to the 20 and about the 18 by Patrick Miller for the University of Florida. So Miller takes him out on the far side. Well, the Gators are putting pressure on up front, and Bobby Bowden calls for the screen. One way to neutralize that pass rush when you're in a long yardage situation is to call the screener draw Wells does a nice job fighting along the sidelines now it's a more manageable third and 12 for the Knowles good pursuit on that one too by Jeff Roth third and 12 at the 18 yard line now for the Florida State University Seminoles the handoff goes to Ross Ross off the right side rips it across the 25 to the 26 yard line a minute and uh, Ten seconds to play in the first half. Gerald Dickens, a junior from Plant City, makes the hit for the Gators. Now the Gators are going to call timeout with a minute 12 left in the first half. They want to get a chance to get that football again, Jim Gallagher. We'll be right back with the score, 21 to nothing, Florida. FSU kicks, Barry boots it high. It will hit down and take a Florida bounce back and be downed at the 40-yard line. So the Gators, with a minute one to play in the first half, have the football. And look at Albert the Alligator as he surrounds a couple of Seminoles and some Gator cheerleaders and some Seminole cheerleaders, showing a lot of good spirit between the two schools. 
Well, it's amazing how your sense of humor decreases as the uh, ball game progresses sometime, depending on what side of the line of scrimmage you're cheering for. Gators 21, Seminoles nothing. First half at Florida Field. And with a minute to go, will the Gators try and get back on the scoreboard? Uh, will the Knowles come up with a big turnover and maybe get a mental left? Kerwin Bell with a split backfield, and the Gators are going to go for the ball. They're going to go for a long Gator, and it is deep to the teal, and he is brought down at the 15-yard line, inside the 15 at the 14. He did catch the ball, and then he gave the ball up on a fumble, but he fumbled out of bounds, so the ball remains with the Florida Gators. So 53 seconds to play in the first half, and the Gators have the football inside the 15-yard line of FSU. Watch the pump fake. Now Ricky Mathiel is leaving the sideline. He's sprinting down the sideline. He does make the reception. Now he's going to give the ball up on a fumble. He fumbles out of bounds. The last team to have possession keeps the ball, and the Gators had possession. So it is Florida possession inside the Knoll 15-yard line. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Kerwin Bell. What a, what a strike. What a strike. Ricky Natiel again. And Bell is looking for the end zone. He's got Natiel. Touchdown, Florida. Kerwin Bell gets Ricky Natiel on a perfect post. Off the left side and right into the end zone for another score. 48 seconds to play in the first half. And Florida up 27 to nothing. Freshman cornerback Deion Sanders is beaten to the inside by the junior from Newberry, Ricky Natiel. Ricky the Rocket Natiel just sprints to the post. Kerwin Bell delivers another strike, six points for the Gators. Hard to believe the Gators have been this awesome on offense. Dawson is awesome, and the point is good. 28 to nothing. We'll be right back after these messages. Cards, two plays, 13 second possession time for Florida. Scored 28 to nothing, 48 seconds to play in the first half. Francis kicks off deep and it goes again out of the end zone. Kicks off to the FSU band in the end zone. And so the football comes out to the 20 and FSU trailing by four touchdowns gets possession. FSU offensively has shown themselves to be explosive this past year, but in this first half, they have not gotten on track. I'm sure Coach Bowden will make some adjustments at the half. Kerwin Bell having a great afternoon. Well, you know the Knowles are shell-shocked. You and I are shell-shocked. I cannot believe uh, that the Gators have sprinted to a 28-zip lead here in the first half. This game was absolutely a toss-up. Uh, before the opening kickoff, and the Gators have just taken complete control of the ball game here in the first half. First and ten at the 20, Chip Ferguson looks at the Gator defense, and Ferguson gives off to Keith Ross. Ross hit, stacked up at the 20. Arthur White, the inside linebacker, makes the hit 43, young man from Frostproof. Right now, the Gators have held the Knowles to 62 yards in total offense. Watch the little draw action right here. Arthur White from Frostproof making the necktie, throwing Keith Ross to the turf, second 10. At the 20, 20 neck, seconds neck to play. Necktie tackle. Did I say making a necktie? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the snap is Ferguson. Dropping and being blitzed. Right down behind the line. Sacked at the 17-yard line by Alonzo Johnson. And what a great final game he's having. Great speed from the outside linebacker position. He just had the speed to get to the quarterback before he could find someone open, comes up with a sack. Look how wide he is out there. There's a lot of yards he has to make up before he can get to Ferguson, but he does come up with a sack. 28 to nothing. The Florida Gators lead the Florida State Seminoles at the end of the first half. We'll be back with a halftime after these messages. With more on the Florida Gator Television Network after these messages. And coming into the football game, we talked about the fact that the Seminoles had such a dominant offense, and Florida's offense had not gotten on track for the last couple of games. And in this first half, the Gators have been simply awesome. Shows you what kind of experts you and I are, right? <laughs> the Gators have 28 points here in the first half. The Knowles have... 
Florida State comes into this ball game averaging 35 points a ball game, averaging 415 yards total offense per game. The Gators hold them to 54 yards total offense. The Gators have 328 in total offense. Just a tremendous domination by the Gator offense and also the Gator defense. The Gator defense is holding that strong Florida State attack to 54 yards. It's, it's actually hard to believe that this has happened, but the Gators just completely dominated the Knolls here in the first half. Possession-wise, too, Florida's had a hold of the foot second half in just a little bit. A, uh, Seminoles most likely will elect to receive. It is their choice here in the second half. Elect to receive in the second half because of the fact that they need to get points on the board. And we'd like to tell you that this telecast of Gator football is being seen by fans all over the state of Florida and the United States. No matter where you are, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a card or a letter with a self-addressed stamped envelope and we'll send you a Gator bumper sticker and a Gator keychain. Your comments are also welcome. Send your card or letter to Gator Television Network. Post Office Box 14485, Gainesville, Florida, 32604. And we'd like to thank each and every one of you who have written in to comment on our Gator telecast. It's been just certainly an enjoyable year for us to uh, follow this fine football team. And they provided us with a lot of thrills and excitement throughout the year. Well, Southeastern Conference football is terrific college football, and we have the privilege of uh, watching every Saturday afternoon from the 50-yard line, getting the replays and such, and our production team does a super job from Channel 20 here in Gainesville. They certainly do. Put some excellent pictures up there for us to talk about, and we've received mail from 27 different states, including Hawaii, and also gotten mail from Japan, so there are a lot of Gator fans around the country and around the world. John David Francis ready to boot the football off as we get ready to start the second half of play. He moves to it and kicks it high. And it's going to go way deep and will be taken by Keith Ross, number 20. And Ross will bring it out to the 20-yard line as the Florida State Seminoles get a shot at the football to begin the second half of play at Florida Field. They're trailing by 28 points as we begin this third quarter. Ferguson is two for eight for seven yards. He's been intercepted twice. Well, we mentioned the Knolls have used four different quarterbacks this year, but they're continuing with Chip Ferguson here at the beginning of the third quarter. He's the freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina at 6'1", 207. formation being used by the Knowles. Receivers left and right. The pitch is going to go to Ross who comes to the near side and is stacked up as he hits the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was Lewis Oliver that got him, the youngster from Belle Glade. And brought down there right at the line of scrimmage. So that brings up second down 10 at the 20 for the Seminoles. Well, your strong safety a lot of times cheats up towards that line of scrimmage. And he has to have that uh, linebacker personality on occasion to make that big hit. And Lewis Oliver did a nice job right there. Chip Ferguson with the eye formation again. Florida with the three down lineman trying to put the pressure on now. Ferguson drops the throw and does. And it is complete to Hassan Jones. First down at the 37-yard line. He's stuck by Curtis Stacy as he touches the football. First catch of the afternoon for Hassan Jones, a, a great wide receiver for the Seminoles. In the mold of uh, Ouija Thompson and Jesse the Jet Hester and Dennis McKinnon, who went on to play with the Chicago Bears, Ron Sellers, Fred Belitnikoff. The Knowles had a history of great wide receivers. First and 10 at the 37-yard line as Ferguson gives off to Cletus Jones, and Jones gets a couple of yards to the 42. Keith Williams brings him down. Yes, that's true. They've had a lot of great pitchers and catchers up there in Tallahassee. Quarterbacks like... Gary Padgett, Kim Hammond, Steve Tensey, Jimmy Jordan, Wally Woodham. They've gone through four this year. Well, they need Ferguson to have emerging. That's right, Jim. They need to have some success right now with this offensive series. They need to reestablish some confidence on their side of the line of scrimmage. Right now, the Gators have all the confidence. Second and five at the 42-yard line. And Ferguson rolls on the quarterback keeper, then pitches to Ross, who is driven out of bounds at the 39-yard line, behind the line of scrimmage. The freshman from Newberry is hit and bounced out. Yeah. 
So now that brings up third down and seven on the 40. Well, Jim, it looks like Neil Anderson and Alonzo Johnson are in strong running for my vote as the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. How about Ricky Nateel and Kerwin Bell? There's a lot of stars out there this afternoon. Third and seven at the 40-yard line for FSU. Split backfield as Ferguson drops the throw. He's under some pressure and throws out there in the flat, and it is complete. Bounce out of bounds at the 44 is Victor Floyd, the tailback, coming out of the backfield. Patrick Miller takes him out, and uh, so that is going to bring up the fourth down and call it three at the 44, and the Knowles will have to kick away. Alonzo Johnson rushing untouched from his linebacker position, putting some pressure on the quarterback Ferguson and uh, again the Knowles are forced to punt you know they wanted to get something established on their first offensive series and they just weren't able to come up with any consistency on this particular drive Ricky Nateel two touchdowns to his credit this afternoon Lewis Berry fine punting average today right in the 50 yard vicinity as he kicks it up high and Nateel calls for the fair catch at the 17 yard line so the Gators take over the football Offensively here in the third quarter, 12-26 to play, and they lead by a score of 28 to nothing over the Seminoles of Florida State. Lewis Berry really boomed that one. Ricky Nateel forced to make the fair catch. A nice job by the Seminole punter. The Gators are inside their 20. They haven't had bad field position all day, hardly at all, and right now they are back close to their goal line inside their 20. 10 for 12 for 233 yards for Kerwin Bell. First and 10 at the 17. And the giveoff goes to Anderson, turning outside and goes out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Garth Jacks, the outside linebacker, takes him out. Well, we just saw a graphic a moment ago. Kerwin Bell has tied Steve Spurrier for career touchdown passes at 36. And I had the great privilege of playing with Steve Spurrier. And I know it's got to be a lot of fun for a receiver to be playing with Kerwin Bell. It does. Steve Spurrier, one of the great winners of all time in college football. In the first half, 17 tries for Neil Anderson. And as you can see, he's got 83 yards. The give off now goes to John L. Williams and Williams across the 25 to the 26. We've got a flag on the play. Fred Jones, a strong linebacker, brings him down for FSU. Steve Spurrier, we might mention, has gone on to become one of the outstanding young coaches in professional football. The hole is going to go against the University of Florida, and it will be marched off. They take the football back to the 11-yard line. It goes back to the 11-yard line. So Florida has set back some for that holding call. The defense is concerned. That's just like a sack behind the line of scrimmage. They got to get themselves emotionally up right now. We were talking about the Knowles being out of the ball game emotionally. Here they have the Gators backed up, and they do have a chance to get something done. High formation being used by Florida right now as Bell looks at the FSU defense, and he gives off on the delayed draw to Neil Anderson, who stacked up after a short gain on the play by Fred Jones. 11 minutes and 50 seconds to play third quarter. The Gators 28, FSU nothing. Now the Gators were hoping right there that the Knowles were coming out of control and blitzing and they would sneak the tailback by him on the draw, but it just didn't happen. The Knowles tripping up uh, Neil Anderson. Now it's third and long. Let's see what the Knowles do in terms of their pass rush, if they have an all-out blitz or if they sit back in coverage. Third and 15 at the 13-yard line. Split backfield behind Kerwin Bell. As Bell looks, being pressured, throws a quick pass out to his tight end, Rodney Jones, 87. And I'm sure he was about the fourth receiver on the play because Kerwin was looking long first and then flipped it out. So it goes to the 15-yard line. Uh, One-yard gain brings up fourth down, and Criswell comes on to kick. Kerwin did a nice job of not giving up the sack right there, dumping the ball off, and even though it didn't accomplish much, they weren't... Uh, in a losing yardage situation by dumping the ball off to the safety valve. Waiting on the snap now is Criswell standing at the goal line. And he gets a nice one off. 
It's going to be taken down by Sanders at the 42. He's at the 45. He's across the midfield stripe. That's back at the 40. And he's got some room. And he's at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. And he's in the end zone for the score. But there is a flag on the play at the 15. Just tremendous athletic ability by Deion Sanders. I don't think anyone ever got more than an arm on him. That's the lift the Knowles were looking for. Illegal procedure against the Gators is declined. The Knowles have a big, big play by Deion Sanders, the freshman from North Fort Myers, Florida. Watch the cutback right here. Now he's in a wall of Seminole blockers. Cuts back again. Lewis Oliver missing on the tackle. Now Criswell is the last player there. And he doesn't have a chance because he gets blocked. Just a fantastic play by Deion Sanders. So that gets FSU on the board. And the Seminoles have six points. It's 28 to 6. Derek Schmidt will attempt the extra point. Kirk Poker will hold. Waiting for the snap is Poker. Schmidt moves to it and boots it, and it is good. With the score, the Gators 28, FSU 7. We'll be right back. He didn't have the return set up. They were going for the block. Deion Sanders was all alone. Once he broke that first wall of coverage that the Gators sent down, he was gone, and then he did some dancy doodles. Schmidt kicks off deep, and it will go out of the end zone, and so the Gators will take over the football first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Let's go right now to the sidelines and John Nugent for this report. First and 10 at the 20, Neil Anderson with a carry to the 22-yard line, brought down by Fred Jones for FSU. When you're playing your big rival, you got to have that emotion. You really do have to have it on your side, and the Knowles have, have been lacking that in the first half, and they come out, Deion Sanders has given them a reason to get excited again. The Seminole fans are cheering again. Uh, right now, it's a big series for the Gators and the Knowles. Ricky Natiel splits to the left, 89, now out of your screen. And Frankie Neal, 21 to the top as Kerwin Bell looks, throws out there to Natillo, and Natillo's inside the, across the 30 and to the 33-yard line before he's brought down by FSU's defense, and Paul McGowan brings him down along with Greg Newell. Well, they're just going to take advantage of the cushion that Ricky Natillo has from the cornerback, Eric Williams, and it's a quick seven yards for the Gators. First and 10 at the 32 now for the Florida Gators. Wickman left and Neil Wright receiver-wise for Florida. When you have that great speed that Ricky Natil does, a defensive back naturally is going to back off on him once in a while. Look at that. Four catches, 86 yards. When they do that, you come right back to him on the short routes. So the crowd is really getting into it here at Florida Field this afternoon. The final regular season game of the year for FSU. The final game of the year for the University of Florida. FSU 8-2 coming in. Florida 8-1-1. Here they come now on first and 10 from the 32-yard line. High formation. Give off going to Anderson and Anderson to the 35-yard line before he is brought down by Fred Jones. I sound like a broken record all the time, but I, I cannot compliment John L. Williams enough. He just is a tremendous blocker. Right there, he enabled uh, his tailback to get four, uh, at least a couple of yards that weren't there without his block. Neil Anderson, I know, appreciates the work of John L. Williams. You see John L. moving the defender back, giving Neil Anderson a little bit of room out there. 20 carries for 92 yards. He's got 1,000 yards this season. 
the leading rusher in the University of Florida history. Kerwin Bell looks, throws a quick one out there to John L. Williams. He squirmed under behind the line of scrimmage. Brought down way behind the line. It's Garth Jacks taking him down along with Fred Jones. Kerwin did not see the pressure coming from Jones and jo uh, Jacks right there, and they made a great play in the backfield. And so that brings up third down for the Florida Gators with the ball at the 28-yard line. Kerwin Bell had hoped to go downfield on that play, but the receivers weren't there, so he made the dump off, but the Knolls were all over. Anthony John L. Williams. Williams. Anthony Williams, 36, is the up back right now. They go with a slot offense, and Kerwin is dropping, looking to throw. He's going long for Frankie Neal. Almost. A little overthrown. I'll tell you, Neal had the coverage beat pretty well. Deion Sanders was back there, and uh, had that been thrown just a little shorter, it would have been another touchdown for Florida. Yeah, Deion Sanders is having a talk with his strong safety, uh, Greg Newell, about giving him some help in the middle. Frankie Nateel did have the step, and the quarterback is looking for some help from his safety right there. The ball was just overthrown a shade. Frankie Neal would have had six. Fourth and 15 at the 28-yard line as Criswell kicks, and he gets off a high one and booms it. And Deion Sanders takes it down at the 18. He's at the 20, and a lot of orange shirts down there, and they take him down at the 25. So a short return that time as the Florida special teams comes right down and takes him down. Oh, he is dangerous, and you can tell that if he gets just a, a bit of an opening, he's going to be gone. Deion Sanders, number two. He's returned four punts for 108 yards and one touchdown this year. And he's just learning to play that cornerback position. He's a freshman. Ricky Nateel and Frankie Neal are giving him some lessons out there this afternoon, but that young man has tremendous ability. Credit Walter Bird, the snapper with the tackle on that one. First and ten at the 25-yard line. The eye formation out being used by FSU. The pitch is going now to Victor Floyd, trying to turn to the left side, and he is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Florida diagnoses that, and Ron Newton, the junior outside linebacker from Clearwater, makes the tackle for the Gators. Now the Knolls like to get the ball to the tailback. They like to get him around the corner, but the linebackers for the Gators are just playing that corner real tough right now, and they're not allowing that Seminole tailback to get outside. Seven minutes and 18 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Gators 28 and the Seminoles 7. Up over the football is the center, Parrish Barwick. And the snap goes to Ferguson, who's looking for somebody out there. And it is caught, but stuck right away at the 30-yard line. Is the tight end, Pete Panton. And Lewis Oliver from Belglade makes the tackle. Panton, the tight end from Venice, Florida, makes a nice reception right there. Chip Ferguson had plenty of time to look his receivers over, over, and the tight end was probably his second selection. Third and the five with the ball on the 30-yard line. For FSU, they're in their own territory. Ferguson, five for 11 for 32 yards this afternoon. The Gator defense has contained the young man from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Throws out into the flat, and it is complete to the 35-yard line, close to a first down to Victor Floyd, the tailback coming out of the background. Win the 1986 Sunny's Fighting Gator truck. All you have to do is fill out the entry form available at participating Sunny's Real Pit Barbecue locations. No purchase necessary. Contest ends December 1st. The customized orange and blue 86 Ford Ranger could be yours. Victor Floyd almost makes the mistake of not getting enough yardage on his pass route to make that first down, but he just got it by about an inch. The Knolls picking up a first down. Again, getting back to that momentum factor, that confidence factor. Right now, the Seminoles are getting a little bit more confidence with their offensive attack. They're at the 35-yard line. Florida with the three down lineman. The linebacker's right in the gaps. The give off is going to go to Victor Floyd. Tries it off the left side. Swarmed under by the right side of the Gator defensive line. First guy there, the right corner man, Jarvis Williams. The sophomore from Palatka. Well, you're looking at one of the uh, best defenses in the nation. The Southeastern Conference is one of the strongest football conferences in the country. And the Florida Gators lead that conference in total defense. Let's go to John Nugent for this injury report. Jim, bad news for the Gators. Ricky Knight is out for the remainder of this ball game. A broken right wrist. Lewis Oliver is in there now. Tough way to end the season. Gentlemen. 
Yes, it is, John, and thank you for that fine report from the sideline. Second and eight at the 37 for FSU. Ferguson looks and goes long over the top looking for Hassan Jones, and he's got a completion at the 20-yard line. A sensational catch by Jones, and Lewis Oliver was the guy that's just gone into the game, and they picked on him. Well, they weren't really picking on Lewis Oliver. He makes the saving play. They run a little fake option, make the pump fake. And then Hassan Jones sprints down the sideline. See, he's beat Jarvis Williams. Lewis Oliver's coming over to help. Jarvis Williams was peeking in the backfield. The problem that the Knoll defense had a little earlier, peeking in the backfield. Then they send him down the field deep, and he was wide open. Lewis Four. Oliver made a saving tackle. First and 10 at the 20. That was a 43-yard catch by Jones. Ferguson again looks to go to the air. He's got the time to throw, and it's complete inside the five to the four to Darren Holloman. A sophomore from Tallahassee, Vernell Brown, makes the tackle for Florida. Little fake pitch to the tailback. Derek Holloman was open all along on the inside. Ferguson was just waiting for him to get open a little bit wider, and Vernell Brown was standing right there to make the tackle, but the Knolls are on a roll. First and goal at the four. Four minutes and uh, 32 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Gators sitting on a 28-7 lead. Florida State knocking on the Gators' door, threatening here in the third quarter. Ferguson, chance to signals. The Gators up front. And Ferguson hangs on, runs it in himself. Touchdown, FSU. The Seminoles have 13 points on the board. Just a great fake by Chip Ferguson to his fullback, Cletus Jones. And he walks into the end zone untouched. Watch this fake. The Gators are expecting the dive. Here comes the option. There's no one there. He reversed out, faked the handoff, and then just walked into the end zone. 28 to 13 the score as Schmidt goes for the extra point. Boots it, and it is good. With the score, the Gators 28, FSU 14. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to the line. As Kerwin Bell waits for the snap with the I formation. Fakes the handoff and goes, and he's going for Frankie Neal. He's got him. Neal at the 40, the 35. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in the end. Sanders ran him down from behind, but Frankie Neal on the long touchdown bomb from Kerwin Bell. It was second and 12 at the 18-yard line. At first glance, I thought Frankie Neal was hot-dogging a little bit there on the 10-yard line, but actually pulled a hamstring. Watch, watch Kerwin Bell deliver another awesome strike. At least 40 yards on the fly. Frankie Neal has beaten the linebacker who was covered. He's going to be pulling a hamstring here at about the 10-yard line. I thought he was he can feel tantalizing it. or teasing the defensive back, but he was hurt. Just a brilliant play by Frankie Neal from Okeechobee, Florida. And so now they try for the extra point, and Florida leads 34-14. to 14. Is that exciting or what? That is exciting. My goodness. Frankie's had two catches this afternoon for 109 yards. Well, those wide receivers work so hard to get open, and when they have a talented quarterback like Kerwin Bell who can hit them on the button, you know they're excited about running every pass route. Waiting for the snap will be Criswell, the holder. Dawson will be the kicker. Bird, the snapper. And it is right down the middle and good. And uh, the Florida Gators lead by a score of 35 to 14 with three minutes and 33 seconds to play in the third quarter. So Florida reached right back and found it. Ball spotted down at the 39-yard line as Kerwin Bell goes with a slot offense to his left side. The give off on the delayed draw goes to John L. Williams and he stacked up real hard. Gerald Nichols, the right tackle, makes the stop on the big senior from Palatka as we go to the sidelines. John Nugent and this report. Jim, Frankie Neal's scoring play is called 52-Z-4. He runs out about 10 yards and is supposed to hook, but 
instead because Florida State was playing man-to-man. -man, he flew and Kerwin hit him. Also, Frankie has re-injured his hamstring. We probably won't see him the rest of the afternoon. Gentlemen? Ray Criswell is going to boot for the Florida Gators on fourth down, and it'll be bouncing down inside the 20 and blown dead at the 19-yard line. Sanders was the return man. Criswell really got that up high, and Anthony Williams was the guy down in a hurry to... Well, the Knolls had success on offense on the previous series when they had the football. Now they want to get back and move that ball down the field and put some points on the board. Obviously, the time is on the Gators' side right now as we approach the end of the third quarter. First and 10 on the 19-yard line, 124 to play third quarter. And here's Chip Ferguson, who's gone all the way at quarterback with the I formation for the Seminoles this afternoon. Ferguson looks to throw and does. He's got his man complete, but he is drilled at the 34-yard line. Darren Holloman catches the football, and Lewis Holloman, what a hit he put on Darren Holloman. Lewis Oliver from Bell Glade, Glade Central High School. What a just an awesome hit right here. The Knolls are having some su success with this fake pitch to the tailback and hitting the wide receiver coming across. And oh my goodness, that's what you call a kiss on the face mask. Well, he's down on the field right now. And uh, they'll be getting him up in just a moment. You know, that's how the game of football is played, though. It's uh, it's unfortunate that Holloman was hurt on the play, but what happens is you don't want those receivers coming across there untouched. So when they do come across there, you try and make them remember that you're there. And the safety, Lewis Oliver, certainly did that. There's Galen Hall. What an excellent record he has at Florida. And Bobby Bowden, guy who can be very proud of his record at Florida State. Got two coaches who are genuinely friendly and respect each other, both competing this afternoon at Florida Field. Yeah, you hate to see a young man get hurt. Darren Holloman's playing a great football game for the Seminoles this afternoon. He's had a great year for them. He's from Tallahassee, Florida, 5'7", 170. Not a big young man, but it takes a big heart to come across that middle on that slant route and not worry about that safety hitting you. That's the toughest one to run, right over the middle. Holloman, by the way, has had two catches for 31 yards this afternoon. Ferguson is 9 for 16 for 111 yards, so his stat's starting to look a lot better in the second half than they did in the first half. First and 10 at the 34-yard line for FSU as Ferguson gives off to his fullback, Tony Smith, and Smith off the right side and carries close to the 40-yard line. Leon Pennington and Rondy Weston, another Bell Glade product, take him down. Tony Smith, as we mentioned earlier, was one of the greatest high school rushers in Dade County history, and the Seminoles were looking for big things from him during his career, and he's really produced this year from the tailback position. There you see how many seconds left in the third quarter, and the scoreboard tells the story at Florida Field as the seconds drop off here in this third period. And Chip Ferguson looks to throw. He's going up over the top, and it was intended for Hassan Jones, and falls is incomplete. The coverage man was Adrian White, number two. And I think Hassan Jones was perhaps looking for a flag on that one, but there was not. Well, he did get tripped up. It was unintentional, but a lot of times that flag will fly, whether it's, inten whether it's intentional or, or not. And I don't think they thought that pass could be caught, so they didn't throw the flag. If it had been closer to him when the trip occurred, they probably would have flagged that one. Third and four on the 40-yard line is the situation as we come back now for the Seminoles of FSU. Big third down for the Knolls right here on their own 40-yard line. 21 seconds to play in the third period. Ferguson with a split backfield and receivers left and right with the pro offense. And he's got the time to deliver and does out there for the first down as he gets his running back, Tony Smith, coming out of the backfield. And Bulldog down as he crosses the 45. Leon yes, Smith and Pennington does the job. Right, Leon Pennington there, Jim, was isolated on the tailback. Leon Pennington plays inside linebacker. You see him coasting out to the side right there. Tony Smith obviously has more speed and is able just to sprint away for him, from him for an instant and make the reception for the first down. First and 10 on the 46-yard line now for the Seminoles. As the time runs out at the end of the third quarter, Florida 35, FSU 14.
We're back at Florida Field as we start the fourth quarter. The Gators 35, the Seminoles 14. The Seminoles have the football and they've got it on the 46 yard line. And the Seminoles win the third quarter 14 to 7. So they have gotten back in the ball game. They have instilled a little bit more confidence in their offensive attack. As Chip Ferguson, their quarterback, looks to throw, he's got the time and delivers to Hassan Jones, who is hit as he catches the football at the 34 by Jarvis Williams. Jones, an excellent receiver, no doubt about his ability, a senior from Clearwater, Florida, at 6'1", 200, and as you point out early on, a lot of great All-American receivers who have come out of Florida State University, as they certainly know, in the National Football League. Hassan just ran a simple hook-in route right there. Chip Ferguson delivered a strike. Big completion for the Knowles. First and 10 at the 33-yard line of Florida for the Seminoles. High formation now as Ferguson gives on the reverse, but taken down right behind the line is Philip Bryant. Taken down by Clifford Charlton. Big defensive play for Florida. Brings him back to the 44. Clifford Charlton saw that play from its inception. He saw Philip Bryant coming back to him. If Clifford Charlton doesn't make that play, Philip Bryant is still running. That's Not only that, a... he's going to hear about it the rest of the year because he lives in Tallahassee. They're both from Tallahassee. Philip Bryant and Clifford Charlton. Second and 21 on the 44. FSU's Chip Ferguson looks over Florida's three-man front. Now Florida going with the four-man front in the nickel. Throwing a quick one out there to Philip Bryant. And Bryant still on his feet but brought down at the 37-yard line by Jarvis Williams. I'll tell you, the guy's just like... He's just like one of those little Super Bowls. He just keeps getting hit and bouncing up. Yeah. Those receivers have to have a lot of courage. They, the defensive backs are some mean folks, and I guarantee you they'll take your head off if they get the chance. And that's no fun place to be in that secondary, sprinting across with a football, because you know people are coming at you full blast. Third and 14 at the 37-yard line. Split backfield behind Chip Ferguson, the freshman quarterback for FSU. And Ferguson looks to throw, and he's hit as he unloads, and it is almost intercepted by Florida. It was intended for Bryant, and Leon Pennington was the guy that almost made the interception. The pressure, though, was being put on by a couple of big guys up front, and we're talking about Keith Williams, number 66, the junior from Milton, Florida. Keith Williams just co continued to press and to push and to press and would not give up rushing the quarterback and hit Ferguson just at the last minute. The try for three points is going to come from the 44-yard line, so it is a 54-yard attempt by Derek Sch Schmidt. Coker waits for the snap. Schmidt's foot is into it, and it is going to be short and off to the side. And so the Gators take over the football. I believe his school record is 54 yards against Miami. He set that record. I don't know if it was this year or last year, but that is his school record, and he just missed that one and wasn't able to get enough foot into it. He's just a sophomore, though. You know they're glad to have him in uh, Tallahassee for the next two years. He's done an excellent job for him. Jim, I feel Alonzo Johnson, Neil Anderson, and Kerwin Bell have all played very well and deserve consideration for the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game, which will be picking in a few minutes. And Lewis Oliver, there's hard, it's hard to miss a player in that orange and blue that hasn't played well this afternoon. Now I'm thinking about Ricky Natil. On first down, it is Kerwin Bell giving off as his give-off goes to Neil Anderson, who is stopped after he picks up a tough yard or so by Terry Warren, the outside linebacker from Tallahassee, Florida. Went to Leon High School there. Well, the Gators came with one of their favorite offensive plays, that little counter sweep where the tailback takes a counter step to the left and waits for his offensive lineman to pull in front of him. But Terry Warren made a nice play right there from his outside linebacker position. Second down and nine. Ball on the 38-yard line for Florida. Ray McDonald, nine, the motion man. Past your screen as Bell looks to throw, and it is blocked. 
Getting in there is Fred Jones, that strong side linebacker, the junior from Miami, Florida, and blocks it. Also some pressure being put on by Stanley Scott, a senior from Brandon. Well, it looks like the protection's going to hold up, but uh, big Fred Jones is six foot three, and he's going to come right into Kerwin's field of vision. Actually, 83, Stanley Scott, who is also 6'3", got his arms up and deflected the pass as well. Third down and nine on the 38-yard line for Florida. That's what those defenders have to do. They have to put pressure on and get their hands up, get in that field of vision that the quarterback has. High formation as Kerwin Bell looks to throw, and he's brought down way behind the line of scrimmage back at the 28-yard line by Stanley Scott. So they got in and put the pressure on him and brought him down way back there as FSU's defense is very tenacious. The uh, Seminoles have clung on here all day. Watch Stanley Scott coming from the bottom of your screen. Greg Cleveland gets beat to the inside. He's trying to make the block, but he doesn't accomplish it. And Stanley Scott comes up with the sack. Bird the snapper and Ray Criswell from Orange Park the kicker. And does he get that one off high? Sanders. Oh! And he bobbles it and fumbles the football, but falls on it at the 25-yard line. So no return, and Gerald Dickens, the junior from Plant City, is down to make the tackle on him. That ball was so high, it was difficult for Deion Sanders to pick it up. It just seemed to hang up there forever. I thought he was seeding the clowns. Go by any participating Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue Florida location to get your free Gator Coca-Cola collector's bottle. This valuable bottle is yours free with the purchase of any barbecue plate and a Coke. And cents to be donated to a Florida football endowment scholarship for every bottle given away. It's first and ten at the 25 for FSU as Chip Ferguson fakes and rolls and throws. And it is intercepted by Florida. At the 32-yard line, Scott Armstrong from Ocala with the interception. Big, big play for the Gators. Scott Armstrong, inside linebacker, junior from Ocala, Florida. Again, Chip Ferguson making a freshman mistake, trying to force the ball where the receiver is not open. He's just throwing it up for grabs right here. Actually, it looked like the ball also might have slipped a little bit on his hands as he was trying to get it to Pete Panton, his tight end. Scott Armstrong comes up with a big turnover. Now the Gators are in excellent field position to get on the board again here early in the fourth quarter. First and 10, just outside the 30-yard line of FSU. 11.20 to play. The Gators lead at 35-14. I formation pitch to John L. Williams. And John L. still on his feet to the 27-yard line before Stanley Scott brings him down. Paul McGowan doing a nice job filling the hole, making Neil Anderson turn up field. But Neil was still able to pick up about five yards on the play because the pursuit did not get there in time. Second down, call it six at the 27-yard line for the Florida Gators with the I formation, and it's the Williams gang in the backfield. John L. has the tailback, and Anthony is the upback, and John L. gets the call, trying to turn outside and goes to the 25 before he's brought down. Eric Williams, sophomore right corner man from Safety Harbor, makes the tackle. That'll bring up third down, call it four, and the ball at the... 26-yard line. That's a perfect example of Eric Williams, the cornerback, staying home where he belongs. There was no hole open to John Elsa when he popped outside. Eric Williams was just sitting there waiting for him. Number 17, the cornerback for the Knowles. We've got Hodges in the football game now in a slot back position as Kerwin Bell is under pressure and looks to throw. Gets out of the pocket. Runs away from one man now from another. Stays on his feet and slides down. 25-yard line. Made it exciting there. Looked like Fran Tarkenton for a minute. Yeah, they don't have the rule like they have in the NFL where the quarterback is in the grasp and they blow the ball dead. Kerwin was able to shake loose and escape right here. I'm not sure who had a hold of him. Let's see. Now, we still can't pick it up right there. 83 again. It was Stanley Scott who had a shot at Kerwin, but Kerwin has that Jim Plunkett ability just to get away. You know, he's not fast, but he has that athletic ability to dodge and dart, and a 
escape the rush. Field goal try from the 32 by Jeff Dawson, a 42-yard attempt. Criswell with a hold, and his foot is into it, and let's see, it is not good. Off to the side. So the score remains, the Gators 35, and the Seminoles 14. Nine minutes and 11 seconds to play in the game. That's kind of a funny situation. The military got confused down there and fired the cannon anyway. That's what you call positive thinking. They were going to fire that cannon, assuming the kick would be good. They don't get to shoot that thing during Southeastern Conference games, so they're going to get their shots out today. <laughs> you got a lot of gunpowder they've been storing up. Ball at the 25. It'll be first and 10 now for FSU as they come out of the huddle. Nine minutes and 11 seconds to play in the ball game. Chip Ferguson, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, has gone all the way at quarterback for the Seminoles this afternoon. You know, talk about Ferguson, Jim. Uh, he looks like the guy of the future at FSU. Well, he is. Uh, they had thought about redshirting him earlier in the year. They had three quarterbacks returning. Danny McManus had won the job, but he had some concussion problems with some severe hits while he was sacked. So Chip Ferguson was forced into action, and it doesn't has done an excellent job for the Knowles. He delivers to Hassan Jones Gracious. a strike to the 45-yard line and a first down. And you're talking about those vicious hits again. Lewis Oliver Number really 18. delivering a hit to Hassan Jones. Well, Hassan is another guy that you know is going to go real high in the draft this spring. Oh, number one draft choice probably. Watch him catch the football and get hit. Oh, my goodness. So it's first down 10 at the 45-yard line for the Seminoles. A split backfield behind Ferguson with the receivers left and right. Again, Ferguson drops the throw, and his line gives him good protection out to Hassan Jones. And Hassan Jones brought down at the 36-yard line by Leon Pennington. Oliver slowed him down a little bit, taking a shot at him. But he's no little receiver, you know, at 6'1", 200. And he was running a drag route right there. And what happens on a drag route is if the quarterback gets protection, those linebackers have a tendency to keep dropping and dropping. And the receiver dragging across is able to get open and catch the football and then use his natural ability to move down the football field. 35 to 14 is the score. Florida protecting their lead as Chip Ferguson rolls out and throws long for the end zone and it is incomplete. It was intended for Philip Bryant, number nine, who was running a deep fly pattern. Lewis Oliver was the coverage man and Ferguson aired that one out. He's got a nice arm. Curtis Stacy also had him step for step from his cornerback position. Again, they were trying to get Curtis Stacy, the cornerback, to take a bite, look in the backfield, and have uh, Philip Bryant slip by him down the sideline. But Curtis Stacy wasn't going to buy the fake and had him covered man for man. There's the story. 8.25 to play. Gators 35, Knowles 14. Second down, 10 at the 36-yard line. Again, the Knowles averaging 35 points coming into this football game, so they do know how to get in the end zone. They've got 14 right now, and they're threatening again. 14 to 25 for 184 is Ferguson as he looks to throw again. Delivers, and it is incomplete. Intended for Hassan Jones running the post pattern, and Vernell Brown was the coverage man. They collided, but after the ball had sailed past. I think Hassan Jones just tripped making his cut right there, or he would have been open. He just wasn't able to get uh, to the point where Chip Ferguson was going to deliver the football because he just stumbled momentarily. Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan is performance-minded and is proud to recognize outstanding individual performance with Mid-State's Most Valuable Player of the Game Award. Physical fitness, keen mental concentration, and a true spirit to win is what Gator football is all about today and in the future. Third and ten at the 36-yard line as looking to throw is Ferguson, and he does. It is complete, but well, as he touches the football, is Holloman coming out of the backfield, and Jarvis Williams is the guy that really put the hit on him. Well, you're talking about football being a violent game. Chip Ferguson gets plenty of protection from his big men up front. Jamie Duke's doing a nice job up front, but watch this hit by Jarvis Williams, number 26. Just a, a vicious hit from the young cornerback. He's a sophomore from Palatka. Fourth down and seven at the 33-yard line on fourth down. At this point in the ball game, 7:42. Coach Bowden's going for it. Got to admire his courage here as Ferguson drops back. Looks, is hit. The ball bounces out of his grasp, but he was in the motion of passing, and so it's recovered also by FSU. But Clifford Charlton came right in there, made a great play for Florida. Clifford Charlton just had the speed to continue to put pressure.
pressure on the quarterback. Number 75, Tim, Tim Hebron, the tackle, is making the block, but Clifford Charlton does a 360 and still winds up in the quarterback's face, making the sack. So the ball is at the 38. It is first and 10 now for the Gators as they hold a 35 to 14 lead. Clifford Charlton is what you call a homeboy. Tallahassee Leon. These are his home folks visiting Gainesville today. James Jones, 83, is slot man now for the Gators to the right of your screen, to the bottom of your screen as Neil Anderson gets the carry and fights to the 30-yard line. Anderson, the big senior from Graceville, Florida. Seven minutes to play in the football game at Florida Field as the Gators will be wrapping up their season today. Well, the clock continues to be a bigger and bigger factor here in the fourth quarter as it ticks down 654, 653, and the Knolls are down 35 to 14. Now waiting for the snap will be Kerwin Bell on second and eight at the 40-yard line is incomplete. Intended for Natio on the left side and Rawls is incomplete. Eric Williams was the coverage man. Clock stops with 6.37 to play. Florida Gators are 8-1-1 coming in today. 5-1 in the Southeastern Conference. Teams they have beaten who will be going to bowls include the University of Miami headed for the Sugar Bowl, a 35-20 win. LSU a 20 to nothing win, Tennessee a 17 to 10 win, Auburn a 14 to 10 win. So a tough schedule played by the Gators, no doubt about that. As Kerwin Bell throws out in the flat intended for Neil Anderson on third down, and the balls is incomplete. Jesse Solomon, the weak side linebacker, is the coverage man for FSU. Good pressure from Daryl Gray, the senior from Lake Wales, Florida, forcing Kerwin to run from the pocket, and he tried to throw it to Neil Anderson, but it was an incompleted pass for the Gators. Waiting for this snap is Criswell. And he gets it off high. And taken by FSU. Taken to the 33-yard line, and that was Curtis Thomas, 22, returning the football. And Walter Bird, the snapper, down to make the hit. And can't say enough about the fact that Bird plays on special teams, snaps the ball, and then gets down there and has twice the afternoon to make the tackle. Greg Cleveland <laughs> saying hello to the folks back in Orlando, the big senior. You know, he's happy about getting a chance to play, in the, play again, coming back from that knee injury. The seniors, we mentioned how important that game is to them. First and 10 at the 34 yard line for FSU as Chip Ferguson hands off, and the handoff goes to Tony Smith, and Smith gets excellent yardage close to the midfield strike as he goes across the 45, and they're going to spot it down at about the 49 yard line. Dwayne Glover, a freshman right corner from Titusville, Florida, makes a tackle. Offsides against Florida, and it is declined by uh, FSU. Here you see Tony Smith. That's the kind of play that Florida State's used to getting on Saturday afternoon. That's the kind of yardage they're used to getting from the tailback position. First and 10 now at the 49-yard line for FSU. A little over six minutes to play. The Gators lead it 35 to 14. Waiting for the snap would be Ferguson. Freshman, done an excellent job this afternoon. Throwing oh. and it is incomplete. It was intended for Philip Bryant, number nine, and he was running that post again across the middle, but he was very well defensed. Leon Pennington, uh, fine defense by him, and Vernell Brown deep on the play. Leon Pennington looking for that interception again. Uh, a senior, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, his last Saturday afternoon on Florida Field. There we see John L. Williams, the tremendous senior fullback, third leading career rusher in Florida history. Uh, total yardage as a back coming out of the backfield, breaking or close to breaking Tommy Durrance's uh, yardage record. Already broke his reception record coming out of the backfield. John L. Williams, the great all-round fullback. Second and ten at the 49-yard line as Ferguson looks at the Florida defense and Florida in the nickel. Ferguson rolls out looking and unloads long and it is incomplete. Intended very, very deep for his wide receiver there. Randall 
Andy White, number 82, and Dwayne Glover was the guy that got up and tipped it away. Dwayne Glover is a freshman, Titusville Astronaut High School, number 33, doing a nice job. Third and 10. It still remains at the 49-yard line. Five minutes, 43 seconds to play. Here comes Florida State with receivers left and right. They go with a pro eye. Florida with a four-down lineman again. And dropping, and Ferguson throws way out in the flat, and it is incomplete. It was intended for... White, number 82, who was out here in the flat, and it goes as incomplete. Good coverage by the Florida secondary. It's so difficult to pass protect when you're behind and late in the ball game, but the young men for Florida State are doing a nice job giving protection to the quarterback. Alonzo Johnson, Florida's All-American linebacker, another terrific ball game for, here, for him here on Florida Field, his last appearance. Fourth down and 10 at the 49-yard line for FSU. They go for it. Trailing 35 to 14. Chip Ferguson to throw. And he unloads long. Intended for Jones. Almost intercepted by Florida. Brunel First Brown. interception by number four, Brunel Brown, the senior from Gainesville, Florida. And Hassan Jones was pretty open on that play. Brunel Brown breaking on the ball, the senior from Gainesville. I think that might be a reason he's seeing a lot more duty this afternoon. He's played that safety position very well for the Gators at different times during his four-year career. Here we go, senior Patrick Miller, Panama City, Mosley High School. Just a terrific ball player for the Gators during his four-year career. 35-14 to 14 is the score, 5-29 to play in the football game. First and 10 at the 49-yard line of FSU for the Florida Gators. Bell, the quarterback. The up back would be Anthony Williams. John L. Williams at the top of the eye. Receivers left and right. As Bell gives off to John L. Williams, and he goes across the 45-yard line. I guess they're going to spot it down right at the 45-yard line of FSU. As he picks up some nice yards on that carry, it'll be second down six coming back. Well, you know, Florida's had two great fullbacks over the last... Uh six or seven years, James Jones, and then uh, John L. Williams. It'll be interesting to see what young man can step in that position next year for the Gators. Slot offense again, and this time it's John L. Williams trying to turn outside, but just doesn't get the running room and is brought down as he reaches the line of scrimmage. Felton Hayes, a freshman from Brandon, strong side linebacker, is the tackler for FSU. John L. Williams and Neil Anderson have, Neil Anderson have done such a tremendous job toting that football for the Florida Gators over the last four years. These two teams have had two common opponents this year, Auburn and Miami. Florida beat Auburn 14-10 and Miami 35-20. Florida State lost 59-27 to to Auburn and 35-27 to to Miami. Third and five at the 44. And here's Kerwin Bell. Throws, and he's got Anthony Williams. And Anthony Williams inside the 30 and is brought down at the 29-yard line. He's the young sophomore out of Tampa Plant play for Roland Acosta down there. Roland taught him pretty well, didn't he? Well, he's showing you that he wants to be the fullback of the future as John L. Williams is playing tailback right now. Anthony Williams, 6 foot 217, sophomore doing a fine job. There's Ray McDonald from Belglade down where you live, uh, near Palm Beach there, Jim Gallagher. Yes, he's had an excellent career. His dad has been a fine coach in the area. He's a great track coach. And uh, Ray's had a great career here at the University of Florida. He's a super young gentleman, too. Most likely be headed for the coaching pr profession like his father. First and 10 at the 29-yard line now for the Florida Gators. And on the carry to the right side, Paul McGowan makes the tackle for FSU. Brett Wickman, a wide receiver at 5'10", 178. He is a senior from Gainesville, but to Oak Hall High School here in town. There he is. Second and 10 at the 29-yard line. Waiting for the snap would be Kerwin Bell. Anthony Williams is the up back. Kerwin Bell rolling out, looks to throw, and does, and it is incomplete. Inside the 10-yard line, 
was the intended receiver, Eric Hodges, and the coverage was by Eric Williams and Greg Newell. Neil Anderson, what a career this guy's had. He and John L. Williams forming to be called Rural Express because they deliver the mail. Do they ever? Most outstanding rusher, yardage-wise, in the history of the University of Florida, and there have been some great backs here. Third and 10 at the 29-yard line. As Bell looks blocked, bobbled around and picked off by Florida, and it is Wayne Williams, 39, who has the football, but there was a flag on the play, and the indication from the field is that FSU's left side tackle or end jumped offside. Yeah, the Knolls got a little anxious right there. It jumped across the line of scrimmage. The Gators will get another shot at this third down play. Three minutes to play in the game, and the Gators sit on a 35 to 14 lead. Isaac Williams perhaps getting his hand on the football there. The offsides call against FSU advances the football to the 24 for Florida. And here they come. A split backfield of Williams and Williams. The Williams gang behind Kerwin Bell. And Bell fakes, throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end Tom Petty, 85. But it goes as incomplete. And Greg Newell, the free safety, was the man on the coverage for FSU. Two minutes, 43 seconds to play. Here comes fourth down five, ball on the 24-yard line. And Mr. Dawson is going to get a chance at another field goal. The kick is going to come from the 31-yard line, so it'll be a 41-yard attempt. Jeff Dawson grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. Lives in Lantana, Florida, and boots the football, and it is good! And so Florida now leads by a score of 38 to 14. We'll be back with more, but first, these messages. 239 to play, 25 yards, 7 plays, time of possession 250. Jeff Dawson's field goal puts the extra points on the board for the Florida Gators as Francis moves to the football and really gets a lot of foot into it and takes it into the end zone, dropping to one knee in the end zone will be Keith Ross, the freshman returner from Newberry, Florida. Scoring drive, as you can see, there it is. Jeff Dawson's field goal makes it 38, and the Gators lead 38 to 14. As the Knolls go into their huddle, they've got 62 yards rushing the football. They came into this ball game averaging 230 yards per game rushing the football. What a great job that Gator defense has shutting down the rushing game of the Knolls. And as they fell behind, they were forced to pass a lot more than they wanted to, obviously. Chip Ferguson has showed well this afternoon. He'll be the quarterback of the future at FSU. Drops back to throw, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Tony Smith coming out of the backfield. Well, you have to give the Seminoles a lot of credit. They went into the locker room at the half, trailing 28 to nothing, and came out and put 14 points on the board. And uh, Florida has been completely dominant in the first half, had kind of a rocky third quarter, and then has come back very strong here in this fourth quarter. And with that 38 to 14 score, um, right now, pretty insurmountable with two minutes and 34 seconds to play. But the uh, Seminoles played like all Bobby Bowden coach teams and hung in there the entire way. Ferguson looking, throws, and it is incomplete. Yeah, you know, when you're behind 28 to nothing against the little sisters of the poor, it's hard to come back. Right. But when you're against a, a team as powerful as the Florida Gators and it's 28 to nothing at the half, you're in trouble. Here's the, here's the mid-state federal players of the game. Neil Ferguson leading rusher and Alonzo Johnson the leading sacker, Neil Anderson, leading rusher, Alonzo Johnson, the leading sacker, the Mid-State Federal players of the game. All-American caliber, both of those young men. Third down and 10 on the 20-yard line for FSU. 
Ferguson's taken every snap this afternoon. He looks, throws out in the flat. He's got a man open, and he's across the 30-yard line. It looks like they picked up the first down. Henry Brown makes the tackle on the receiver, Tony Smith, coming out of the backfield. Now the Gators are dropping back in their prevent defense. They don't want the Knolls to pick up the long bomb on them, so uh, Chip Ferguson is forced to deliver the football to his back. Uh, Tony Smith, it looks like Tony was injured on that play. Hopefully not severely. They're going to need him in, the, in their Gator Bowl effort against Oklahoma State. Well, Florida's beaten a lot of teams this year that are going to bowls. Miami, Tennessee, Auburn, Georgia. And they're two minutes and 18 seconds away from the end of the Florida State game. We'll be back with more, but first, these messages. His hands up, knocking Ferguson's pass away. Anderson and Alonzo Johnson, the Mid-State Federal players of the game. Both very deserving young men. Ferguson throws out in the flat, and it is complete. Down at the 40-yard line is Victor Floyd, the tailback, catching the football. Coming out of the backfield, Curtis Stacy made the tackle. Here's Kerwin Bell, our Mid-State Federal Player of the Year. And a very, very legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate for 86. That's an All-American smile, isn't it? It is. That's an All-American player, too. I guarantee you, that kid has got a great shot at the Heisman Trophy in his last two years at Florida. No doubt about that. He makes Saturday afternoon exciting at Florida Field. Ferguson looks to throw, does, completes it, and there's a fumble on the play. Tony Smith, the ball rolls around on the turf, and it is recovered by Florida at the 36-yard line. Making the recovery, Dwayne Glover, number 33. At least he's the guy that's holding up the football. Smith, the tailback, gets hit by Lewis Oliver, I believe, and Curtis Stacy makes a shot at the ball. He's not able to come up with it. Glover does get it. So he's a happy guy. 123 to play. First and 10 at the 37-yard line for Florida. Well, the Gators. Here, here comes a mass substitution for that offensive powerhouse that was out there this afternoon and they're getting a standing ovation from the crowd here at Florida Field a record crowd to watch the Florida Florida State game what a game those young men played up front just uh, a fantastic game 443 yards total offense 343 yards passing the football we saw Jeff Zimmerman a minute ago selected earlier this week to the Walter Camp All-American team. The give-off now goes to the tailback off the right side and picks up a couple of tough yards, but there is a flag on the play. A minute 20 to play in the football game, and there is a call against Florida for illegal procedure, so that's going to set them back. Well, they got a little excited. They're getting a chance to play here uh, in, in a situation where the second unit doesn't see a lot of action and they got Nancy and jumped off sides. So you're looking at uh, Sam, Big Sam Garland. That's our tall drink of water we talk, talk about. There's Leon Pennington from Oakland Park High School Fort Lauderdale, Florida. What a great job at the inside linebacker position. What a great job Sam Garland did playing offensive tackle today. First and 15 at the 32. Carries to the 35 by Joe George, so give him a couple of yards. A little over a minute to play, and Rodney Brewer in at the quarterback position, number 19. Young man from Apopka High School. Well, you can't say enough about the way that everybody in the offensive line has performed this season. Jimmy Davis from Apopka, what a fine job he did at Thank offensive you. guard. He'll be coming back next year, he'll be stronger, more mature. A lot more experience. He's, he's, uh, Gators got to be excited about their opportunity in the Southeastern Conference next year. 40 seconds to play in the football game as the seconds just tick away. And Florida will wind up with their second consecutive 9-1-1 regular season record. It's also the 20th game which they've been unbeaten at home. Florida has not suffered a defeat at home since a loss to LSU in 1982. And they'll now go to 27-1-2 at Florida Field since the start of 1981. Senior Curtis Stacy from Bronze.
Gleason High School, doing a nice job all year long at his cornerback position. We'll be right back, but first, these messages. And for another first down for Florida. Yeah, he's a senior from Lake City. Joe George, the running back, 5'9", 181. You know, he's glad to get a chance to get on the field in his senior year. There we look at Alonzo Mitz, the big senior tackle from Central High School in Fort Pierce. Nine seconds to play. The win today is the fifth straight over Florida State. 30 computers in front of FSU. Well, the Gators win the first half 28 to nothing, an obvious tremendous advantage. Uh, the Seminoles come back and win the second half 14 to 10. But when you're behind 28 to nothing, you're in a world of hurt. Vernell Brown, we talked about what a great effort he's done this afternoon from his safety position. He's had a fine career at, here at Florida. You know that all of his family and friends from Gainesville High School are proud of the career he's had. And he had two brothers play here at Florida. Here at Florida Field, Alfonso Williams made the last tackle for Florida State. You can see Galen Hall going up on the shoulders. They're bringing Bobby Bowden across the field to uh, shake hands with him. And Hall is now 17 to 69 and 84 teams for the all-time best 11-game record in school history. And that also ties the 9-1-1 regular season ledger, a mark that ties the 84 team for the all-time best regular season record in history at the University of Florida. Five straight wins over Florida State University, another win for Galen Hall, and a, a great way to end up the afternoon beating a team that is headed for the Gator Bowl. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, exchange of handshakes and high fives on the field. Uh, Bobby Bowden, a real gentleman of college football. Uh, Galen Hall is the same kind of person, just a, a good man. And you know both schools have terrific programs, and obviously the Seminoles are disappointed. Leon Pennington, a senior, so excited. Gerald Dickens there with him. Uh, it's a tremendous emotional rivalry, and the Gators came out on the winning side of the ledger this afternoon. 38 to 14, the final score this afternoon. We'd like to thank our spotters, Dick Craigo and Robert Slott, for all of their help throughout this past season, and uh, all of the people that pitched in and um, helped us on the broadcast. Thank all the crew at Channel 20 from Orange Park, Florida. And there will be a lot of these young men who will be going on to careers in professional football. Just a minute ago, you saw number 38, Jay Baker. He's a fifth-year senior, a walk-on from Lake Worth High School who's hung in there all these five years and gotten to play some along the way. And, you know, for these seniors, it is an emotional moment. Uh, they're all lining up now on the field to have headshots. And these are all the, the gentlemen that have played here. There's Ray McDonald. Uh, who, Scott Armstrong had a great game this afternoon. There they are, the seniors who have been together through thick and thin here at the University of Florida to end two years in a row with records of 9, 1, and 1. I think there's some non-seniors in there that just want a mug for the camera. <laughs> it's tough to leave that field on your last Saturday afternoon. There's Neil Anderson, Leon Pennington. All right, Greg Cleveland. He's a pretty face, isn't he? Good times in Gainesville right now as they enjoy the victory this afternoon. And we'll be back with more, but first we'll take time out for these messages. But with Florida on probation, this proved to be their bowl game. And